Hello, everybody, and welcome to another end-of-month PMP review. Why, what is the end-of-month PMP review? Well, that's when we get together uh, and we look at our Facebook group, the Painters, Motivating Painters Facebook group, uh, and we look at the March, in this case March, uh, end-of-month review submissions, uh, and, we, and we offer some feedback tailored to what the uh, hobbyist has asked for. So... Uh, what is this basically? It's pretty simple. Every month in the PMP, we open up a new event, review submissions for that month, and we invite all of our hobbyists and artists and everybody who's in here to go ahead and submit one miniature if they'd like, a completed project, and uh, request specific items for feedback. So that's one thing I'll say. First, no more than one per month. Second, do be specific when you're asking for feedback. Um, you know, I don't mind it if it's sort of general type of thing. If you say like, I'm looking for general improvement, I don't, it, it's always better when I can be directed, but general improvements also ex is okay, of course. And I'm going to go through all of these submissions and offer my best feedback I can. A lot of people included black and white photos that's continuing to happen, which I love. Please keep doing that. It's amazing. Uh, it really helps show the contrast when I, whenever I speak about contrast, it's very helpful. Oftentimes I will use shorthand. I'll direct you to a reference video. You can find that link down below. Uh, in that reference video, you'll see where I go into deep dives on things like increasing contrast, non-metallic, uh, shading on bone, a whole, uh, a whole bunch of different stuff. And the reason that I have that link to that video is because one, I don't really want to repeat myself 8,000 times. And two, because uh, there's a lot of submissions and I would like to get this done in some reasonable amount of time. I like doing this. It's a lot of fun. But of course, I only have so much free time in the day. So with that being said, uh, if you want to join us, link is down below. Go ahead and click that. You do have to answer all of the questions for us to let you in the group. If you answer two of the questions but don't answer the third, you don't get approved. It's that easy. You must answer all of the questions. So uh, with that out of the way... Uh, let's go ahead and get into this month, and we begin with uh, with uh, Lele, who's given us the uh, the first Avenger, Captain Ultramar, and is looking for some uh, very basically areas to improve. Mentioned it was the first shot at freehand, so I looked over the miniature, and I think the freehand's excellent. Uh, it's very well done, very well captured, very sharp. I, I like that. I like the shield the most. Uh, I think where you have opportunities to improve is in popping up the highlights and smoothing out the blends and cleaning and like sharpening your edge highlights. It's that would really be simple. So like we look here at the blends on the red, it's kind of rough and we still have some gloss when you're using reds, make sure you mat them out. Uh, you don't want to be creating this, you know, sort of incorrect shine uh, down here where some of this is shiny and it shouldn't be. I don't mean here. I mean, like here on the side. You see how I can see shine down in the shadow part? That's gloss. That's what you don't want. See this shine coming right here where you have what's supposed to be a shadow is no longer a shadow. That is a straight killer. Like whenever you if you've looked at something and it just didn't feel right or it felt somehow plastic, it's because there's light in the shadows. That's why you want to stay matte. So the other thing I noticed is things like your edge highlights are, are still pretty fat. So we want to come back in with the mid-tone blue and sharpen that out. Uh, those would be my biggest pieces of advice that jumped out at me. You know, it's the same here with the leather, thin down those lines, just a lot of thinner, sharper, so looking to flow improver, adding in inks, stuff like that, and you'll see some better results. Okay, next up, we've got uh, Raphael, who has some questions about basically like zombie skin uh, and wanting to do that. So I would recommend, Raphael, that you go back and look at my how to do dead and pale flesh video. Uh, because that's really going to sum up in much greater detail everything I want to talk about here. And in effect, yes, the skin is just too white. It's too monotone. You have some soft purple down here, but it doesn't comport enough to the volumes that we want to capture. Like there's too much of just, again, so shorthand I'll use during this is one is your highest highlight, two, three, four, five is your deepest shadow. Okay. We have way too much one. Like all of this is one, one, one. One, there's just, there's no transition, right? We just go straight basically into five with very little movement in between. So what you want to do is increase your tonal variation there, right? More purples, greens are also a great addition, can be a great transition color into the deep purple. So you start with a white gray, you go through a green gray or a green, and then, uh, and then especially a brown green into the deep purple. 
And that's how you can transition something that looks a lot more like zombie flesh. Um, do go check out that video, and I think it'll find you'll you'll find that to be uh, very helpful. So there you go. Hope that helps. But uh, cool stuff. All right. Next up, Craig uh, brings us his first project. We return to the hobby. Just general feedback on our big old great unclean one, our big gross boy. Uh, he looks really nice. Uh, general feedback one: Don't use cork unfinished on your base. It never. It looks like cork. It doesn't look like rocks. It looks like you stuck four pieces of cork on the base, with then then stuck some tufts to it. Wash your tufts. Put stuff over. You know the I, like. I talk a lot about basing. Don't just use basic cork. If you're going to put down tufts, you have to put down other material. Paint your tufts. Like force wash into the tufts. Stuff like that. Right. Uh, and you know dry brush the tufts. Make them feel part of it. Use other texture on top of it. All that kind of stuff. Now. On to the great unclean one himself. He's nice. I think he needs, uh, again, a little more variation. Um, I like some of the reds you're using, especially around the wounds and purples. I think that looks good. I'd love to see the uh, volumes of his actual flesh pushed a little more. Uh, he's kind of flat in his color, especially around this area and here. Like, his face is roughly the same color as here, as his pecs, as the top of his belly, as his arm. Like, everything's all kind of very uniform. So stretching that out, pop the highlights up on the face a little more, deepen the color around, especially like the lips. We want to draw attention up here to the face. We can do that also with the horns by drawing in some thin, more ivory colored lines right down toward the base of the horn and then creating a nice deep shadow here on the, where the flesh folds over on itself. By creating more instances of cold to light, or sorry, of light to dark, excuse me, uh, up top and brightening this area of his head, uh, and deepening a shadow of his lips, adding a little more poppy red here. Poppy red draws the eye. That's why the, the, the mouth belly is so grabs your attention. If we had a similar poppy red up here, uh, even in some parts of his mouth or something, uh, it would help draw the attention back up. And that's really where I see the biggest challenge right now. So yeah, that's my thought. may also want to think about integrating some actual rust elements like orange and brown into the steel. It looks nice. It looks worn and weathered. We could go a little farther, add in some browns, some oranges, things like that. So there you go, Craig. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Callum. Uh, just looking for feedback on color choices and a uh, better look on the metal chain mail around the groin. Sure. So, I mean, it's obviously very unusual to give Gotrek a bright turquoise beard. Um, my basic answer to you is it's fine. Like, I, I have no issue with that. But we don't have any other instance of that color anywhere on the mini. And it's really intense and really strong. I would desaturate it a little more, pull down more into the shadows, and and desaturate it by adding highlights as well. So, like, more of the individual hairs need to be picked out in his mohawk. More down here, deeper shadow up near the... Or, or either way, you could go highlight near the top or a deeper shadow here, and then deeper shadows lining in between the beard. I would also look at where else I could integrate the turquoise. Like, say, it could be the the um, the magical trinket he's holding in his hand up here. Could... could uh, could have some turquoise in it, right? We could hide some turquoise elements around in the base. There could be a couple little uh, turquoise things down there. They don't even have to be as bright. Uh, when it comes to the belt, I mean, I think we just need to be a little cleaner there. It looks really like we filled in the detail there, and I'm not sure how that happened. Um, but we want to make sure those, like, I've, I've painted this guy, so he has a lot of little individual segments. We want to make sure those are nice and individually picked out cleanly, right? Um, and I think that's probably what I would recommend overall is just, you know, a little more finish across the whole thing. Like some of the blends are still fairly rough. I see a lot of like texture in places, stuff like that. So you want to kind of smooth some of that out with some glazing, things of that nature. Uh, compositionally, I don't have a problem with the, the big change to the green hair. I think that can work fine. You just want to make sure that you balance a bright color like that out around the figure. So hope that helps, Callum. Okay, next up, we've got Jared, who's looking, uh, been painting for about seven months. Uh, work is rough, we wants to take his models to the next level. Sure. So, my biggest advice for you here in looking through these photos is we need to, like, I, I would direct you toward my How to Shade True Metallic Metal video. Most of this guy is True Metallic Metal. That, and it looks like we're using our washes really sloppily, like, to be honest. Like, I can see the, I can see all the tide marks and, and signs of just, you know, applying washes pretty heavily, right? So, we want to make sure we're really moving the brush around, not letting any of that wash settle. While they're still available for the next month and a half, go watch any of Darren Latham's videos and watch him apply washes in his videos. Like, if you watch how he painted his silver skulls, that's a great example of how to properly use a wash. The key is you want to hit the wash 
on your brush and then keep your brush moving like this at all times. You don't just slop it on and then go. You always are keeping your brush moving. You're spreading it out. You're getting in all the, all the, the details. You're getting rid of any excess and you're making sure there's a thin layer. So that's number one. Number two, watch the shading true metallic like non-metallic metal videos because we need to control more of the light here. A lot of this guy is gold and metal and I need to see, you know, more directed shadows through glazes of like the gloss washes and shades or inks or something like that. You can mix those with the, the, the metallic paint, whatever you do. And, and take more control of those reflections. That video will go into a lot deeper dive on it. I would also warn you about being careful about using something like green in a composition like this. Like it is the complement. You've used the complementary color to red in a singular instance. So the only thing you see on this miniature, if you relax your eyes, is that green lantern. That's it. Um, you know, so if you're if you're gonna again, if you're gonna use a color like that, balance it. Maybe his sword has a green glow. Maybe there's something green down on the base. Maybe his eyes have a green glow. Maybe the comets have a green glow. Like I mean, you could you know do whatever you like. Whatever, whatever makes sense to you. And then finally, I'd say just that your my advice would be work on your brush control, your smoothness of application. There were some spots I noticed in here where the paint wasn't quite as clean as it could be and how you want to apply it. So do make sure that you're, you know, going back and doing that appropriate cleanup step, especially around things like the, the wings and where you've got silver touching gold. You want to have nice dark lines separating all of those and things like that. So. Uh, but overall, really cool take. Uh, I dig him. I, I mean, I like the the red and, and sort of uh, white sort of candy cane colored Stormcast. I think that's cool. I think that's a good take. I haven't seen that before. Okay, uh, so Jason Ho brings us a squad of obliterators. And what he's specifically wondering is how he can make the lava effect more interesting. Uh, so my basic advice is to, well, first go watch like the most recent lava video that I do. It's a lot bigger lava on a base, but it'll still cover the, the principles. So one, it shouldn't just be a thin line like this. Like lava should travel more. It should, it varies. Like it's a very hungry thing because it's chewing up and melting the earth around it. So it should have some kind of variance in its, in its flow pattern. Uh, two is it needs to have more, much more variance to where it's hot. So like the sides here should be a deeper, colder, whole red. Maybe you've got orange and then you've got a hot spot here that comes into up into into yellow and then a tiny bit of like yellow white right here for the hottest burn and then back into an orange and deep red and then another close burn right here. In other words, places where the lava is like cresting and bursting through and is becoming its super hottest form where it hasn't cooled at all. By switching that out, it'll feel a lot more um, it'll feel a lot more real and organic and it, like it's casting light out in the world. And then similarly, make your dry brushing on your rock match that. So first of all, I would take this dry brushing down into a more whole red color and only put like the orange glow nearest to those spots that have that super bright highlight. Um, you also want to probably wheel it back a little bit and have more darker spots interspersed in because you can't strike a match without creating a shadow. So like opposing all of these lights should be really deep, dark black. All those things will make it kind of feel a little more realistic. So I hope that helps. <clears throat> okay uh silas uh asking what area should he focus on to push from tabletop standard to display so i mean okay let's unpack this and he said i have the feeling the answer is going to be more contrast and tonal variation ding ding uh number one rule of these reviews if even you know it then you're right and that's exactly it like first of all we want to make sure we mat out everything um secondly like the skin is very flat I need more color, more variation in that, more tones, sepias, reds, purples, the whole deal, more volume definition amongst the muscles. Uh, when it comes to the pants and the jacket, something like texture showing in there, like, is that a jean jacket or some kind of material? Then show me some hashing, some stippling, some something that captures the texture of that, right? And when you go to the black and white, you really see the, the, the issue, right? Like, this is all gray. Right? Like, we don't have any variation here beyond the light that's being cast. There's a little bit here on this kind of edge. So, yes, just a lot more tonal variation in all these things. The boots need, you know, need a lot more going on, like texture and stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to the base, again, we just had some gray and we stuck a tuft to it. I need to go a lot farther than that, right? Like, there's not much gray rock like that in the world because there is rain and dirt and things like that. So, I need colors and... You know, show me some reds of some rust, some browns of some dirt, some greens of some moss. If you're going to stick a tuft in there, don't stick it right in front of the guy. Put it behind. Don't put, don't block your own miniature. 
and uh, like just compositionally, that's bad. And two, what is this yellow straw popping up out of an otherwise completely dead concrete, right? So like, again, adding these tones and then washing the tuff, dry brushing the tuff, make it part of it. I also would trim the tuff. Like it shouldn't be that big. That's a very big plant to be bursting out of, you know, just a little bit of concrete. It's kind of oversized. Like think about what you would be doing if you, this would be like you walking down a concrete sidewalk and encountering a plant that comes up to your knee out of the middle of the sidewalk, right? It wouldn't, you like, it's just, you, you wouldn't see it. It would get knocked down. It would get trampled over. It wouldn't grow to that height, especially with nothing else around, right? No other nature around, which is what you've portrayed for me in this, in this scene. So, uh, a lot more tonal variation throughout additions of texture and kick that base up a notch for me and we'll be in a good place. So, but overall, you've got good brush control. Your, your application's clean. I would also, again, recommend make sure you mat these things out. Like, you want control of the light. And I see a lot of glossiness, a lot of satin shine to this. You don't want that in a finished project. Some AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish will, will help you there. All right. Next up, uh, Apollo uh, doing uh, Shrike. And he said this is his ninth mini overall and his first attempt at a non-metallic metal. Uh, so just like kind of what's that look like? And overall, I think this is a, a, a really good job, Apollo. Like, I think you're you're on to a good place here. Um, the non-metallic metal around the shoulder and stuff like that looks good. I like that the best. I don't love the pop lights here on his legs. Those are a little stark. Uh, like, those should be smoothed down just slightly. Uh, like, they're, or, well, maybe a little more than slightly. They should probably use an interference color in there. Like, add a little more of that blue in there since you have a blue tone to your metal. Um, but it looks, the, the silver around here, around the edges, I really like that. The gun looks nice. Um, the backpack, uh, I think, is where, hold on, I want to save this one. Let's go, yeah, that's fine. Uh, the backpack is where I see some opportunities for improvement. We don't quite have the reflection there on the silver flippy flaps that he's got. Again, each of these little spots should be capturing a reflection. There should be a bright line here. This should go up to a higher one, probably a little bit back here. That's where, like, the shoulder is, the shoulder line looks correct to me. This is the right amount of travel we've done here. The edges are well-defined. That's good. Here, I don't see the same thing. Now, when we come to the back and we have the orange, um, I like the orange in here. The reflection needs to be softened a little. You, you've encountered the classic challenge of OSL where your reflections are basically the same intensity as your light source. A light doesn't cast an equal power light. Like the, the wall that the light is shining on is not as bright as the light bulb, right? So these glows need to be softer and a little bit smoother in their transition. Like here is where it's the most noticeable to me because it just, it you have like this orange and then it just dies. It's a hard line. OSL doesn't work like that, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't cast a light and then stop. It, it fades very slowly. So, like, what you would want to do is there'd be no blue here, right, other than maybe the deepest shadow. This whole thing would get warmly lit. So on the front and on a lot of the armor, you're lighting it with cold light. The back of this should be lit warmly because the, the light source that's creating the reflective light effects is warm. It's, the, it's his jets, right? So, like, and it would be overwhelming the rest of these lights. There'd be no blue light here and stuff like that, right? Uh, so that's kind of the thing that jumps out at me. So there you go, Apollo. But I mean, you're kicking butt for just starting out. So keep up the good work. Okay. Ben, uh, working on his first bust and wondering if there's an obvious area that could be seen for improvement. Uh, and then he had used Verdaccio as the underpainting. I mean, yeah. So the answer is yes. A lot more tonal variation, like a lot. Um, when you're working on a bust, you need to go until you think you're done. Then you need to do that entire amount of work over again. And then once you once you've pushed it to that level and you swear you can't do any more, you need to do half as much again. Okay? So like, let me make this real for you. The eyes have no color in them around them, right? Like I need more detail. The top of the eye should have a shadow, the bottom of the eye should have a red touch. The center part here should have more purple and red. Like, look at my eyes and the, the shadows and stuff like that. The coloration that's here, the red, the purple, the veins, these kinds of things that get captured, right? The bridge of the nose here should have color in it, right? Where this comes in, under these lines, the reinforcing that shadow. Up under here, the lips more well-defined. You should be able to see cracks and lines in there because your lips have a lot of texture to them and reflect. 
uh, under the cheeks, you want to see more rosiness into this area, right? I'm assuming you're just going for a sort of standard Caucasian tone and not like, you know, trying to do something else. Ears, same thing. Like, I don't have any color here in the ears where there's deep shadows. There's lots of purples and reds and stuff like that in ears. Pushing the light into a particular color spectrum to set where he is, like the top of his head should be yellow. If he's bald because he shaves his head and there's still hair there, then blue tones on the side or wherever there would be shaved hair, right? Um, so there's just lots of opportunities to keep pushing, right? Better definition of the volumes and a lot more infusion of tonal variation. That's where I would recommend you go. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a great start. You got a nice, uh, you got a nice start here. These are good flesh tones. You want to carry it a lot farther. And my best advice is just look at people. Like, just look at people's faces. Um, look at art of, you know, people who've done portrait and, and, and busts in, in classic art, right? That kind of thing. And, and there you see, if you really see, don't just look, but see. You know, stare at something like that for 10 minutes and you'll get a ton of inspiration for colors you can infuse into that. Okay. Uh, next up, Aaron Perkins, uh, I did the big old, uh, sort of five-headed dragon, uh, Tiamat-like dragon, and just looking for, you know, feedback on the, on the base. Did he fill it well enough? I I'm gonna say no. This guy's really big, but not a lot of him touches the base, and I do think we've got opportunities for improvement here on the base. My best advice would be show me some more stuff in that sand. I think the rocks and the desert sand, I think that all looks good. And I understand a desert's generally fairly empty, but... You don't put emptiness in your thing, so you don't need it. Like, if you don't need the empty space, you don't show it, right, in a diorama. It has to be doing something. So, in this case, I would have skeletons, skulls, bones, something that this, like, if this is where this dragon is sort of staying or defending, show me some dead bodies that he's killed. Show me some treasure that he's taken, like piles of treasure piled up. You know, gold that's spilled out into the sand or whatever. Like, you know, something. We could, we could do a million different things scattered around there. Uh, it looks like you're going for sort of a Sahara-ish desert, so it's not like there's going to be a lot of trees. But you can still have little scrub life and things like that. There can still be little plants, little insects, little things like that. So there's all sorts of opportunities. I would shrink down that space, though. Like, with, with a thing like this, I would that square plinth, I would have made it circular. Because those corners are doing nothing for you. They're just literally dead space. Right? Shrink that down. Maybe a couple bodies here or there where, the, where like, just skeletons where it's, uh, where the dragon has consumed somebody. And I think that would be a much more compelling scene because then the dragon's part of the nature that it's living on, right? It's You're telling an actual story as opposed to just the dragon happens to be sitting on some ruins in the desert. So, there you go. All right, Adrian, uh, looking for feedback on OSL and paint job as a whole. Sure. So, and, and you had mentioned you're trying to work toward competition level. So, I mean, one thing I'll say is that the OSL isn't really working for me here. Uh there's not first of all as the flame in general i need a lot more like orange um and it's reflecting in some very strange ways like i don't feel the the reflection here really um because again as i said like if this is lit if this is some bright light source that we really want to be osl then it should be casting some kind of light that's reflecting over here on this side Right, like these things should be showing this this bright gold and this bright silver. This is reflective metal you're putting near a fire source. It should have a, a glaze of some kind of orange everywhere but the highest light point, the one that's catching that tone, right? And it's really not. So it's not much in the way of OSL beyond like a little bit on the on the sword where you've worked in some of the yellow. And again, this wouldn't give off yellowish light as much as it would cast like a soft orange glow, right? Because fire, especially like active, if you stand there a campfire and it's dark. It's orange light, not yellow light. Um, at the same time, his shadows on the other side, like he's not in shadowed on the other side. There's no reason that light would be catching. I would actually much recommend to, to work on like your sort of paint cleanliness. This is, job looks quite rough still, and I'm not sure what's causing that. Like a lot of the, there, there seems to be a lot of like unintentional texture, uh, especially on like the metal. So I'm not sure if it's just like the metal paints that are getting used or what it is, but it's tough for me to pin down from the pictures. Like, it feels like there's a lot of texture here in this metal, and I'm not sure if that's just a bad metal paint or if there's something else going on. So uh, my recommendation would be take a look at that. Are you using a primer? Get some Vallejo metal color for your metal. Uh, I'm not sure overall what could be behind that. Um, 
I noticed this little like hash mark on the sword with the teeth. If you're going to put something over true metal, you've got to make sure it's opaque paint. Like, I'm not sure what this is meant to be, but they're not even triangles. They're not opaque. So, like, if it's meant to be a marking on a sword, then it needs to be completely matte and opaque and show that it's, like, a paint over top of it. If the metal paint's showing through, it doesn't doesn't ring correct. So, paint, cleanliness, and control. Um, I wouldn't worry about OSL, really, at this stage. Focus on those kind of elements and smoothing that out. Getting the job sharp and clean. Each of your areas well-defined dark lines between them and i think that's your best step you can do then you then move to stuff like osls where you're creating those volumes off of a different light source that would be my best advice so overall he looks good like i really like the blue i'd love to see you post something again next month adrian and i want to see it in like something with more of the matte paints applied because i think the metal paint you're using might be letting this guy down so show me something else that's just using the standard matte paints because what I like your blues and stuff you have here because what I can see of it looks really nice like the tabard and the the blue armor so I think you've got a good handle on that stuff I just I can't judge it too well from this and that might just be the paint letting you down nothing to do with you okay so uh, Tom brings us uh, this girl and some issues in non-metallic gold. Yep, I mean, Tom, I'll refer you back to the, the source video. And yes, I mean, we just don't have gold here, right? We have yellow. We don't go deep enough into shadow. We don't have the individual elements well enough defined. And we don't go high enough up into bright spots, right? Like, let's just take the helmet as an easy example. So, one, whenever you're doing light sources, we need to control the light, right? And make sure that we're using a continual light source. So, you've told me from this helmet that the light is reflecting from this direction, right? Right? Meaning this part should be the highest highlight on there. This should be the deepest shadow, and this should fall into a secondary light again. Each one of these little individual things should have a white edge on it where it's ca caught the light and reflected it. Each of this crown should have a light where it goes into white. There should be light, white light here, here, and here where this caught and reflected. Here, here, and here on the edge of her cup here and down here on the sides of these glints, right, on her belt, on her chain, the, the highest highlight should be here. And then all of the normal highlighting you're doing should be tilted towards that as well, right? Like the light needs to be a complete and coherent story. So like this side of her face should be the most highlighted and here and this side of her, her um, pants and, and you know, the, the, the light here on her breast armor should be lit here on this side and here on this side, right? To match with this light source that we've set. Like these highlights down here on the cloak, this should be very much more in shadowed, and we should have a brighter light here, and much more of this should be lit. Not these edges. Like, there's no reason this edge is lit, as opposed to this whole volume up here, and this is more in shadow, given the light source. But, so go back and watch the, the non-metallic, uh, either, either, obviously, a couple videos I have on doing non-metallics, or uh, in the source video that's linked below. We need more variation, right? We need to go farther on our value contrast, up into one and down into five, into darker shadows. Okay, uh, Sebastian, uh, looking for this is this is the OSL month, by the way. Everything's it's it's OSL athon. So every month it varies. Some months we get non-metallic, some months we get OSL. I should just call this like general advice on non-metallic and OSL because that so often is what it is. <laughs> Which I don't, I, I don't begrudge anybody that. They're, they're two very challenging techniques. So, uh, at any rate, the questions are here mainly, uh, you know, about the, the OSL on the object, right? Uh, okay. So, here's my ultimate feedback on this one. Much of the same I've said so far. I don't know what the red spots are. I don't get that. I don't understand why we just have random red spots here. Is this just like splattered paint? I don't get what's going on there. But moving aside from that. There's too much white and not enough orange here. And again, the reflections are basically the same color as the uh, as the the thing casting the light. This and this are the same light, right? That's a problem. Like this needs to be a soft orange glow, and then I need deeper shadows on the top. The other thing a, a close up to a light source will do is create like really deep shadows, right? Like look at how in shadow the bottom of my hand is because I have a really bright light on top. Right? Notice all the creases and the wrinkles on my hand, how deep the shadows get in there. Look in between my thumb. Right? All of these rings around his uh, around his boots would have really deep, dark shadows separating them. Right? So what I would say is this needs to get knocked down into general orange. This needs to get smoothed out more into like 
Uh, you could have some bright points of, like, a white-yellow light. That's fine, breaking through lava, but it needs to be extremely minimal and then quickly go out through yellow and into, like, a broad orange and then into a whole red. Those are really your colors of, of lava. So that would be my recommendation for you. And then as well, if if that is his light, if that's the primary light here, which uh, is seems to be what the story you're telling, then the opposite sides of those would be very shadowed. If you wanted to get super fancy, obviously, you'd, you'd have the lightsaber lit, and this would be up here would be blue as well as this, and then it'd be lit by the lava compositionally. And then I would literally just go look at the movie and see what they did and try your best to look at that for inspiration. Okay, uh, so uh, Hansa bringing us the Skaven Arch Warlock. Uh, quick job for his son, Skaven Army. Uh, looking for general feedback, basic stuff, contrast, color. Uh, it's a rough job. So sure, I mean, obviously, yes, you're right. You you should need to smooth it more. So I'll just talk about color and composition uh, because, I mean, I think you know the the answer to your question as far as getting that going. Uh, one, do mat things down, said that. As far as color goes and composition, yeah, I think it's fine. I don't think there's much issue with that. Um, so setting aside sort of the roughness and the of that kind of thing, my biggest advice would be... Um, to make sure that with a quick job like this, you well define the individual segments. So again, having like dark lines separating everything is, is, a, is a way to make even a rough paint job look a lot cleaner and more impactful when everything is really clearly separated. Um, so like the in between the armor plates having nice dark lines. I think the green and, and blue work fine. Like you're, you've got, you effectively have a color triad here of orange, green, and blue, which is fine. That is an effective color triad. Uh, the orange, by the way, is your copper. Copper's true color is orange. Your steel's true color is blue, so that's just more blue. Um, so, you know, that's a that's a perfectly valid split complementary color scheme. And so I think, you know, composition-wise, yeah, that's fine. Uh, the the little rocks and, and warp stone pieces look good. Uh, yeah, no issue. For, for a quick speed paint, I think you're in the right area. If you were obviously wanting to go farther, you know, add some more control and smoothness to everything uh pop some of your highlights and and really i think shadows is the more thing you would you would take away from this but overall it's good especially for a a, a quicker piece of work okay uh next up marshall ross uh tried a little in non-metallic black but super bummed uh and just left broad highlights uh so i mean my basic feedback for you here is yes your next step is to continue to push your tonal variation things are flat here so <laughs> whether it's the hair or the skin, his gray pauldron shoulder pad here. By the way, I don't... You mentioned, like, the Space Wolves backwards. I assure you that is not a thing I would ever notice. Um, the Or or care about, even in the slightest. Uh, my my biggest challenge for you is, yeah, we need you need to work on your blending and your contrast. Uh, so, again, reference the source video down below. It's, it's your biggest challenge. You have lots of opportunities for it here in the orange, in the skulls that are on him, in the baby blue of his Space Wolf armor pad. Uh, in the black and stuff like that it's everything's still very flat so your definite next step on your journey is going to be working on blends and how to get that uh how to how to bring that that light in there um, i have lots of videos on blending i would recommend you go back and watch achieving smooth blends uh, i teach classes on it it's a, on that same video if you watch that it'll hopefully set you on the right path and you can you can start getting some more act activity there so but overall cool dude i like him good stuff Okay, uh, so uh, Marco uh, brings us a little bit of a diorama, looking for feedback on the composition, the various elements, and, uh, and you know, talking about that. So, Marco, you said yourself in there, uh, you know, like you were scared to go for the highlights and add the contrast. I mean, you knew that was a problem. Again, listen to your own brain. One of the great secrets of painting is to just listen to your own brain. When your mind tells you something doesn't look right, and you think like, wait, does that not look right? The answer is yes, it doesn't look right. Like, listen to what your brain is telling you, right? Is the best advice I can give you. So, um, and, and that's when I look at her, that's the biggest challenge. She's very flat, right? Like, this is all red. This is just yellow. This is just black. This is just blue, right? Like, we need to way pop the tonal variation on her, like, in every way, as well as clean up when you're doing this. Like, careful of using yellow and black next to each other. It has a bumblebee effect, and it's, you know. Not really what I recommend. We also have a few too many colors on her. Like she's kind of riotous. We don't need that many colors. Like we can, we can, and that will go away. By the way, if you actually have, um, if you have more shades and contrast, 
because you will naturally desaturate your colors. And so it'll be less just like, here's a straight pop of red and here is a, you know, um, here's a straight pop of green and here's a straight magenta and purple, right? So if we, if we take those all down a notch like that, it'll, it'll really help with that, uh, with that work. So that's what I would, uh, what I'd recommend. Definitely the contrast there. Now, as to the composition of the scene, yeah, it's fine. It's a good layout. You could probably shrink the building just a little bit. It doesn't need to be quite as large as it is. Uh, so let's go back to the total scene. But this is a, a traditional composition. That is to say, figure left. Like, this is a, you can, uh, if you go look at the um, uh, several articles that get written about the different styles of composition, you'll see that you're you're adhering to a pretty classic one here with the left side of the frame having it. And then, the, 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 like, strong to one side, light element on another with the mirror written on there. I think that actually works pretty well. Um, so, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Composition's fine as far as general layout. Your next step is definitely, again, contrast, pushing that tonal variation up. Okay. Uh, Poncho just has some, uh, all his war bands he finished in March. There's a lot of them here. Uh, too many for me to give feedback on. I'll, I'll scroll through. <laughs> you didn't ask for any targeted feedback, but I'll scroll through them because they're, they're really nice. I think he did a good job. Uh, so it's awesome to see all of these beautiful completed war bands. This is great work. Uh, if you've got questions about any of the future wins you do, you know, feel free to drop them in here and ask some some targeted questions. But uh, really cool work, Poncho. Like I, I dig them, man. You're you're you are super ready to go for Underworlds. And I think you've got some fantastic looking war bands to hit the table. Okay, uh, Dave brings us the Ultramarine Rhino Razorback, and he was he said he was trying to go for sort of like the deliberate kind of box art style, right? And his two questions were, how could he improve highlighting like a Tron movie in the cartoony look, or how could he approach painting it differently? So, uh, he said, feel free to criticize this piece as harshly as you see fit. Yeah, sure. So, um, like, it is very much just the standard, like, GW everything kind of in a mono color with the edge highlight style. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If, if this is what you were going for, then your biggest challenge is just to thin down your edge highlights. That's it, right? Like some of your edge highlights here and here and in this kind of area are still very thick. And then make sure your tracks have more depth to them. So these need to be like more heavily washed and stuff like that. Your, your, uh, this thing on the front, whatever this thing is called, I don't remember. But the thing that scrapes people out of the way, more, you know, heavily like controlled with darker shades in there. And this should have edge highlights as well, that kind of thing. So if, if that was the style you wanted to go with, there you go. Like it's, you just take that to the next level. Um, same by the way, with your scratches and stuff, like you only, you have a few scratches in here, here and there. So that's fine. Minimal is good. Uh, when you use this kind of stuff though, make sure you do keep the line underneath very thin. Like those need to be razor thin and some of your underlines are quite thick. Now, other things you could have done. Sure. I mean, a hundred other ways you can do vehicles. There's all sorts of different methods of panel modulation. And despite memes you'll see on the internet, none of them are necessarily incorrect. You can do uh, center panel modulation. You can do sort of traditional kind of zenithal where it goes to one edge or the other. And all those are fine. So you could bring like dark shadows up to the top of the panel and then highlight it more toward the bottom and have, have the light carry through in those regards. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with that at all. Um, you could... Uh, you could have like much deeper contrast, heavier weathering, and do some streaking. You know, weathering and streaking is the other place you could go from a job like this. So you can take a simple job. This is this is a classic scale model thing, right? Where you often kind of go for a let's call it a more straightforward paint job, and then you use a lot of weathering and streaking and stuff like that. So those are all tools available to you. Um, I think any of that's fine, and I would recommend to experiment with some of those because I think ultimately it's going to look a lot more interesting than this style, like. We're, we're wandering into personal taste. I think if this is your goal, you've executed on it fine, thin down your edge highlights, go back with the blue and clean them up, and, and jobs are good, right? If, if this is what you're aiming for. If you want to try and experiment with other styles, which I think look much more visually compelling because contrast is king, then yeah, like go watch my panel modulation video and my weathering videos and streaking and stuff like that. And like I have lots of videos on all that. Go watch those and, and give those a shot. Um, but I would say, you know, don't, uh, you, you want to sort of pick one or the other for, if you're going to do an army of it. <laughs> okay. But I think it looks good. You, you, you executed on what you wanted. All right. Heroic brings us, uh, first time his post on the monthly review. Uh, and he's just kind of looking for general feedback. 
Uh, so my general feedback for you here is largely, again, on uh, blending and purposeful texturing. So, like, this is a good shot to sort of explore what I mean. What we have here is a lot of edge highlighting and stuff like that all around the edges of things. That's fine if we're going to do that. Uh, what I would recommend you toward is more of like a texture look. So rather than just hitting the edges of these scales, drag me down some sharp, thin lines to actually create like scale texture. That's what you generally want to see on something like that. If you're not going to do that, then thin those lines down, like make sure the edges are really sharp. Um, but we have a lot of space where it's very flat, right? Like the the headpiece here is like brown until it's cream and then it's black until it's you know green and so on and so forth right it's this dark color until it's the lighter color at the very edge i would also encourage you to look explore mo more tonal variation in the red around the monster what i mean by that is like this area here should be a deeper shadow than this on the top of his shoulder like this part is directly exposed to the light this part is directly in shadow right like the top of my arm is a very different color than the bottom of my arm, and I'm wearing a red shirt, right? Like, look at how pronounced that shadow is. That same thing should be happening here, right? So the yellow that's underneath him should have a deeper hue than the color that's up here, right? We should be going down into either a colder yellow or a brown or a rust color or something like that. So that's what I would push on uh, for this particular piece. Overall, I think it's nice. It's a good composition of colors. I don't have anything wrong. I like the the inclusion of like the very off desaturated green with the red, I think is a good choice. That makes it very minimal. You don't get the Christmas effect out of this because you're using that uh, like an Incubi Darkness or something like that. So I think that's a, that's a well-chosen color and I think it's uh, that looks nice. So there you go. Okay. Uh, next up, Kyle. Uh, as usual, tips and critiques. Sure. Uh, like I, I read over your, your process earlier. Um, I mean, yeah, I think Kyle, my, my biggest feedback for you here would be much the same as what I've said. So we've got a lot of opportunity here to, to work more controlled lighting into this. So like, because you're of the method you described where you're using a lot of contrast evenly, we just have this flat color kind of everywhere. Like it's, it's deeper is always a single color up to light. Right. And what we want to do is take a little more control of it and add a little more color. So like her skin is very singularly colored. Right. Like I we have some glazes in there. We need to go farther, especially in shadows. Like where are the lights? Where are the shadows on her face, under her arm, down here, you know, between her legs, up under her torso, like adding more variation there. The skin probably, though, is the area that would need the least work. Like where I really see the opportunities and stuff like the hair, the, the hair is largely just black with gray dry brushed over it right and what we want to do is create a light line like go back and look at that shrike that we saw earlier and you see how he had the light line like go google a pantene hair color bottle and see how they create the halos of light that's the kind of thing we would expect to see right that kind of control same with the gold and the light here so we want to move away from this like everything is shadowed where it's deep and then equally highlighted all the way around it right we want to move more to like a, a volume highlighting, that kind of thing. So that would be my strong recommendation for you there, Kyle. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Farron brings us uh, uh, the Slaughter Priest. He's looking for feedback on the flesh tone and metallics. So yeah, I mean, my basic feedback on the metallics is you're going the right direction. I see you trying to work the true metallic in a, in a non-metallic style. That's good. Keep pushing. Um, like, the metallics still look really chonky, so I, I would ask what metallics you're using. Like, if you're using GW metallics, I would highly encourage you to stop using them and go get something like Vallejo Metal Color. If it's your primer that's giving you a chonkiness, um, then that's harder to deal with. But, like, it, it makes it tougher to get a smooth look over it, right? It just looks naturally rough. Like, you can see the texture in this. Um, and we don't want texture on smooth metal. We want texture when we want rust and stuff like that. Like iron wouldn't have this visible texture at this scale, right? These would be, that would be really massive bumps if we blew this guy up to, you know, six and a half feet tall. Um, the flesh tone, again, much of what I've said before applies here. You, you've included a lot of reds. That's good. Um, we need to do a better job of defining the volumes on this guy. So really, I need more five. We don't go into the deep enough shadows to really set the muscle structure apart. 
uh, no part of this guy gets in shadowed enough, like, to control the muscles. I don't need it to go to black, but I need some subtle purples and stuff like that in there, really defining the individual muscles on this dude, right? I would also uh, say the same thing, like, when we have elements like this, make sure you've got nice dark separation between them, and that's clean, like, I can see some metal paint got where it shouldn't be there. So, just my answer is keep pushing. You're you're doing a lot of the right things here, Farron. Like, you've worked in a lot of red tones. You've got some nice high highlights. We could probably push some of the highlights, especially up in the face, a little more. We want those to be, you know, bright. Okay? Uh, I would also be careful how much satin is on him. But keep pushing those shadows. You need a lot more heavy four and five in this guy. And then with the metals, just keep working, mixing the inks in and smoothing them out a little more. And I think that'll that'll help you out there. Like, you, you go a little bit from, like, too dark to too much not with the dark and that's just something that takes practice of mixing your inks in with your your regular metals and if you kind of keep working that and pushing that and kind of figuring out how you can you can push those around and glaze those and bring those together you'll get a nice smooth effect so there you go hope that helps okay uh matt brings us this uh green glowing uh fellow uh and he mentions uh reanimator was the inspiration uh, R.I.P. Stuart Gordon, gone but not forgotten. Great, uh, great director. Uh, just lo left us just recently, sadly. Uh, so I think this is is good. I like the green glow. I think it's working pretty well. Uh, I think this shot. Let me see if we can find the shot I liked that really kind of captured it. Yeah, this is fine. We'll use this one. Um, what I would say is probably you want to look at again where I think you have opportunity is in deepening some of your shadows more than it is creating some of your light. So. Obviously, we've got the green glow coming up from below. I think the inner part of its cloak here is a little too strong compared to the rock. Like, if the light if is below this guy, I would also be careful with a rock that overhangs the base like this. Like, he'd probably be better just on, like, a regular base with, or maybe a smaller rock, and then, like, an area of green glowing goop or something that was clearly creating this source. The source being completely off screen, as it were, makes it a little tougher to read. But this is probably a little too intense. The edge up here should all be catching in some fair amount of like a little bit of this softer green. Because you have it coming up here and lighting like the top of his hat and things like that. So that's fine. If it's going to make its way all the way up here, which I, I have no problem with, then it needs to also be hitting the edge of this cape all the way up. Um, so for the most part, I would actually work on creating, again, like I said before, deeper shadows to contrast it. When you do OSL, a lot of people think of that as just casting the light. That's not what OSL is. OSL is setting the color tone. It's just light. It's just light. It's just a very bright light. Like, if you stop thinking about OSL like being the color you're trying to cast out on your miniature, and just think of it like it is a very bright and close light. So the brighter you get to a light, right, the more it creates deep shadows. Light side, dark side right? Strong, deep shadows in the folds in my skin. That's what I mean, right? So around his belt and his buckles and things like that, those should be really deep shadows around the sides of his waist. Things like that cast into deeper shadow. So really cool and uh, absolute A plus for the uh, reanimator reference. So well done. Okay. Uh, Darius bringing us the beautiful War Kitty. Uh, feedback on the directional lighting. Tried to make her face a warm light. Looking for general feedback. Um, this was originally going to be a golden demon piece, so looking at it from that perspective. Sure. Uh, so thinking about it, I'll, I'll evaluate it as best I can from the point of view of a golden demon piece. Um, just as a side note, the base is very boring. You should try to do some more with that. See all the things I said previously. Bases don't matter as much for golden demon, so I doubt you'd really get dinged on that, but it is pretty boring as a base, so just watch that with just having mud. Now... As to directional lighting, sure, it's captured on the face actually quite well. I really like the face and the fur. I think you did a nice job there. Where we have a lot of opportunity here still is in the feet and the metal and uh, this white fur. So, the and the horns. This is directional lighting. Okay, cool, I'll buy that. This side of the face is lit well, captured well, got it. Okay, great. Why are the horns so monochromatic? Right? Like, if the light is coming here, then, they, then these horns, like, add a texture, add something to those horns um, where they have an actual texture that's getting caught in the light and is deeper and shadowed here. Right? This side should be higher light. Um, I think the hair here captures it well, but, like, ostensibly what should happen is this should be well lit, 
This should be in shadow. This should be in shadow here. Got caught the light. Good. Tongue lit. And then this part right here should be fairly well lit, right? And this should actually be traveling into shadow. Same with the, the white fur. Like, back here on the tail, this feels not at all done to the same level as the rest of the piece. And, like, things like that they'll notice in Golden Demon. Like, everything, everything, everything has to be done to the highest of levels. Everything. Every piece, every inch, every millimeter of it has to be taken to the highest level, right? So, like, more of the controlled sort of deep blue shading you have here needs to be here. More of the individual lines of the fur picked out. Um, the gold, it looks kind of flat. So, again, I would look at working some, some color and shadow and more variation to that. Again, capturing the directional lighting. And then, finally, on the feet, we've got kind of this satin glossy shine to the feet. That should be killed out. And we want to take some more control of the feet, again, with the light. Clear darkness between the toenails and the feet themselves. Make sure those two elements are well separated. And then show me the actual texture and striation or something like that of the toes. Okay? So that would be my feedback for you, evaluating it from, like, thinking, you know, at a high-level display piece, like something that was going to go in Golden Demon. So hope that helps. Okay, next up, John Gallant uh, taking on James Waffle's shaded base coat method. Uh, just looking for general feedback on the composition and feel the piece. So, more OSL. Uh, I think it's a good take on it. So, I have one, like, overall, I like the way you captured the green. The ball is definitely the brightest part. So, well done there. Um, the weapons look really nice, like, especially this weapon here. I think you captured really good. Now, as to the sort of technique, you, you see it in this shot. This is perfect. Okay, this is one I wanted. Okay, so same thing applies. If you're going to do this, I need more shadow, right? Again, like very, very overwhelmingly bright light casts deeper shadows. So this area around here should be in deeper shadow, under his leg, things like that. But also, when we're doing green glow like this, it needs to be smoother. So if you watch how James builds up his lights, he always has these very smooth transitions where the 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 light, he starts with just like the whatever the tone is barely infused with that orange and then it builds up to that bright light right so same thing here like we drop from green to not green in the space of a an instant right and light doesn't act like that <coughs> light goes you know is a slow fade so like these far away spaces should be really light really soft just subtle infusions of green that fade to nothing and then into the normal colors and into shadow in fact on the opposite side. Um, so compositionally, I feel like you're in a, you're in a good place. We just we want to like smooth in that composition out. So it's a question of refinement more than anything. So, but overall, very cool, John. I dig it. Uh, we got a couple of Vermin Lords this month. I'm excited about that. Okay, Andy. Uh, this is his model. He was going to enter in Resin Beast. So Andy, I'm going to hold off on this reviewing this. Uh, I I would like to give you feedback. Uh, here's what I'll offer to you, Andy. Because I don't know the status of Resin Beast, and like, here's the thing: if I give you feedback, uh, then you're that you can't enter this <laughs> ever. And like, there will be a Resin Beast next year. But like, if I give you feedback as one of the judges, then this piece is off the table forever. So here's what I would ask of you, Andy: if you can put in the comments, uh, what your, you know, that you're okay with that, and that you won't enter this in in Resin Beast. Um, just hit me up in the comments, and then I'll write you an email. Like, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to give you the feedback if you're okay with that. But I don't want to ruin this if you're, like, if you're going to keep asking for feedback and then and then enter it next year or something, because it'll be back. Um, you know, the we will return with, with conventions next year for sure. Um, and, you know, I don't want to stop you from entering something, depending on that. This is a big dragon and a big piece of work. So, um, so comment down below, and then I'm happy to email you. Okay? Just, and I'll... I'll if you say, yep, this is never going to get entered, it was, I'm done, I'll do something else for next year, cool, I'll give you feedback just like I would have as a judge. Okay? Okay. Uh, Ryan King, first submission, planning a company of Marines. Uh, pushing, uh, he's pushing yourself to try for, like, you know, a, a better painted army, tabletop plus plus. Okay. So, uh, yep, feedback on the test piece. All right, if that's what we're aiming on, if that's the level we're aiming for, then, one, I need things to be a lot cleaner. So more separation of the individual elements. Like, this doesn't have any dark line in it. This doesn't have any dark lines hard separating it here underneath the knee pad, here in the, the arm elements, stuff like that, right? Like, 
you need very clear here on the backpack, like you need very clear dark lines separating all of this. And a lot of these just don't go dark enough, right? Like they're they're a soft brown at best. Push that darker, more contrast. Uh, next up into just the contrast itself. Um, I know this particular thing you're going for is a more muted palette than say like Imperial Fists, but you still want to have it be, like there's just not enough contrast here. They're very flat yellow. I would also look at separating out some more of the elements, like separate the belt color to be different, stuff like that, right? Um, the uh, the but there's just largely not enough like movement to shadow on the plates. Um, so if you go watch the Imperial Fist Yellow video that I did, that'll give you ideas of where you can set shadows and and up that contrast again. I'm not asking you to copy that scheme because I know it's slightly different than what you're aiming for, but it'll still give you the idea about where to set the color on the plates. The final thing I'll mention, and like you can really see it here, like this is all one color. There's no contrast in this yellow, right? Um, so that's like the, the black and white tells the whole story, as it always does. Uh, the final thing I'll say is if you're going to do this checkerboard pattern, you have to clean it up. It looks really rough right now. Um, and like you're doing a formal, very distinct, regular pattern. Human brains are really well trained to pick out inconsistencies like that. So make sure you go back in with your white paint, your black paint, and get those lines really smooth and the box is really even. It takes a lot of time. So, um, but that's what you got to do if you want to paint a pattern like that. Okay. I would also recommend just some more tonal variation on things like the gun. I mean, the gun's very flat again. So look at some kind of light transition going up and down that. So there you go. Hope that helps, Ryan. Okay, Dan Lewis, uh, first submission of the PMP and AO, first AOS model in many years. Uh, so what he was looking for here is uh, just kind of general feedback and, uh, you know, how to continue improving for his next project. Sure. So the biggest thing I see is two things jump out at me. You say the armor has more contrast in real life. I'll trust you, but I'll tell you right now, in this picture, I don't feel it. Um, if you look at, like, Darren's from the Masterclass, it goes, it has more contrast in it. So I would continue pushing on the green. That's what I would say. I, I assume you followed along with, with Darren there and work was kind of doing some of that work. Se second thing, more contrast on the horns. Those are still kind of flat. Go and look at like the, the way he increased the striations and the brightness there to draw the attention inward. We need to go higher. Um, lastly is the, the wood paneling, uh, like this, this wood stock here. Um, I need more like stripes and striations. It's very flat wood, but you can paint those in. Again, thin lines of ivory and stuff like that to create that variation. Both he does that and Traverian does that as well in his take on this miniature. So you could watch kind of either of their videos for sort of uh, feedback on that. Okay. And those are the three areas that really jump out at me, Dan. So hopefully that helps and uh, you can you can work on that kind of stuff and, you know, just continue to pushing those contrasts. I think the skin looks great. You did a great job there of capturing what, uh, uh, you know, the, the skin and the variation. I think that looks really nice. That's well executed. Okay, uh, Daniel, first post for the PMP here for critical feedback. Uh, his, it was his project. He was using glazes. Uh, comments on overall composition and uh, general feedback and on the execution. So it's good. I think some of the glazes are working. Um, my recommendation would be keep going. So I need more tonal variation in things like the shadows. You know, like here, his skin is still very monochromatic. Like I love the red in the nose. I love the red in the ears in in the this part of his arm and stuff like that. That looks really nice. So I think that's good. Um, we need to go farther, right? So push that skin more. Um, give me some deeper shadows here, you know, and bring me up to a higher highlight here, that kind of thing. Um, when it comes to things like the texture, again, on his back, give me some more interesting shadows here, stuff like that, right? When it comes to the mushrooms, um, you know, maybe some more patterns or stuff like that on there, I think would go really far. Again, when you go to the black and white, it tells the whole story, right? Like that's just one color basically of white. And, and so we want to see more, more contrast in that, in that flesh where we can see the light and that kind of thing, right? If I, if I were to suddenly be in black and white here, you would see like a really bright light up here where it's reflecting and, and where my eyebrows are and my nose and then you would see really deep shadows here and around here and stuff like that under my chin. That's the kind of stuff you want to push to capture. So I hope that helps. But he looks great. So I love that you're exploring this. 
uh, continue, keep going. Uh, keep pushing it. Uh, okay. Uh, next up, Phil Cassidy bringing us another, uh, another Spheranx. Uh, and don't ever feel embarrassed to share your work. So there's something you said in here, Phil, that I really want to push back on hard. There is no, nobody is at the end of their hobby journey. So please do always share and, and, and get feedback. The way we all grow together is by taking our next steps. Okay. So don't ever feel bad. Some people are in, might be more farther along on their hobby journey. Some people might not be as far as you. And that's always going to be true for every artist everywhere in the world, period. So never feel bad. Okay? All right. So my basic advice here is, again, much as what I've said, especially in the white fur, I just need to see variation. So let's go look at the real cat because I think that's helpful. Um, here's the, the real kitty cat, right? So here's the real kitty cat under bright light. Notice how much shadows are captured in him. Here and here, see his pinky little ears, which you captured nicely there. His pinky little nose, that's good. But notice how much shadows get captured, even in this very snowy white cat. And he is he is very cute. Uh, we don't have any of that here. This guy's a lot bigger. And so, like, here on the muscle structure, bringing some soft grays and some, you know, blue grays into that would is very much what would happen there in, in that kind of highlighting, right? So bring those kind of soft shadows in and then give me some more individual texture on that. By bringing in more soft grays into some of the shapes and defining those volumes, you can then come back with thin white lines. Go watch my painting white hair video and you'll see how I build it up. And it'll be, you could use the exact same technique I use on like a sister of battle's head on this cat. And it would, it would make it look like reflective shiny white fur. Uh, but overall, I think that's that would be my main piece of feedback for you for now um, and what I would challenge you to work on. Same thing, by the way, with the horns. Um, you know, they feel very monochromatic. So, uh, you know, some more control of them, some more transition where, like, maybe they're darker here to frame the head and they go to a light color. You know, more texture, more control rather than just bone washed with sepia, right? We want to we take better control of that, go in, clean that kind of stuff up. Okay. Next up, Alexander, a uh, recent commission he did for a client. Uh, and basically he's saying, you know, uh, you know, what can he do to take it up to the next level? Uh, constructive criticism is welcome. So basically my answer is uh, we need to sort of, again, it's the photo's a little overshadowed, but uh, overexposed. But we need to clean up the individual elements. I'll give you some examples. The This is poorly defined here between the gray of his hand and the red of this. The lines in between the red, the highlights that are on the red, the individual elements of the, the stuff coming out of here, like brighter edges and sharper definition of the individual elements. That would be my main thing. Like these really need to be well-defined elements. You can see it in the arrows, right? We need darker lines separating the individual arrows and the sheaths and the feathers, stuff like that. The other thing I noticed is that we run into the traditional challenge of, of gray here where we have extremely stark Con, uh, uh, lines in between the in between the the highlight colors. So I would highly say you know work on smoothing those, blending those together, coming back with those glazes, and really bringing those two colors together. You don't want the and then and then having another highlight color on top. By the way, you kind of have two colors there, like black and then gray, right? So you want to be taking that up to a, a sort of higher level. You want to both control the higher volume and smooth the blend out. Again, something like my Achieving Smooth Blends video might help, but that would ultimately be my recommendation. Final thought is with blood. Uh, like, I know they wanted a bloody base, but that's not really how blood works. So go and check out my blood spatter video. Here, this kind of just looks like red frosting got all over everything because it's too bright red. Like, blood isn't that color, even fresh blood. Um, blood oxidizes in a couple minutes and turns deeper, darker colors. Um, when it soaks into things and stain things, it becomes really dark. So, uh, you know, you can always Google blood stains. That's a fun way to get on a watch list somehow. But, uh, but you'll see that like blood doesn't have this super bright pattern, even if it's on like a white wall, it almost doesn't look that reflectively Ferrari red. Like you've got it here. Right. So that would be my kind of final thought. Go back and check out the blood splatter video I did. And that'll really probably help. Okay. All right, but very cool stuff. Hope to see some more from you in the future. Okay, so let's keep going. All right, so next up, 
Uh, Kess brings us a second airbrush project. Uh, and basically, there's sort of two questions here. Edge highlights on panels. Uh, very thin, but how do you decide on the thickness? And two, blue SL on true metallic. So, first of all, I think the edge highlights here are correct. I think they should be pretty thin. I don't think, th like, how do you decide how thick they should be? They should generally be very thin is sort of the answer. Uh, I don't think you've got a problem with them here. I think they're probably fine. Now, if we go to the shot that shows us the, the blue glow, yeah, I mean, it's hard because you have a very bright blue, right? So what you want to do is take that blue down and make it a little darker, use a soft ink, and apply some gentle glazes of it over the top. That's really how you get that, that effect to be a little bit softer. Um, overall, though, I don't think this is bad. I think it's fine, especially for sort of the, a big piece of terrain like this. Um, but yes, you want it to be a really soft, uh, thin glaze that just barely shows the, the blue reflecting over there. And if you use a slightly deeper color of ink and let the natural highlight from the gold shine through, you'll actually see a better result. So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay. Uh, next up, Caleb, uh, Iron Warriors Warlord. Uh, just looking for general feedback on how I can improve on how you can improve or get better. So my biggest uh, recommendation for you here, Caleb, would be on mainly just paint, paint cleanliness. So there's lots of areas where we don't have the elements well separated, like here in between his cape and these elements. Like you can see some of this is up on here and stuff like that. So we want it to be, uh, you want to make sure your elements are really well separated. And then, of course, uh, you know, again, same with the gold between the skulls. You want a nice dark line between all that. Again, having real strong separation of the various elements will go a long way toward defining things better and then the other piece is just something that i've said a lot which is you know increasing the tonal variation especially the value contrast on the piece things like the gloves are a very single flat color the robe is a very single flat color the skull is a very single flat color right all this kind of stuff so just continuing to push that up i think is your your main mission there so hope that helps okay jc uh, this is a duel, uh, and the idea was to play with OSL. Uh, sure. Uh, well, first of all, your choice on Larissa there is, is interesting. Seems familiar to me somehow. <laughs> so it looks nice. Uh, and then we've got against the, uh, the Ogre right here. So let's dig into the individual pictures. First of all, I like the lava effect. This captures a lot of what I'm talking about with the orange glow. I think for the most part, it's well implemented. Looking at the Ogre, right, there are some places where I feel like we can do go a little farther so like why is his beard which is which would theoretically be quite satin and oily not catching any of the orange light like that feels like a, a missed opportunity there um same with probably the edge of his hoof because it's very bright white and it's pushing right up against the edge it feels like there should be a little bit of orange up here kind of on this this area here i mean getting all these things exactly correct is always tough right um on the blades where you've got the reflections going my recommendation would be I, you were following, I assume, probably the the tutorial that I did on the on the blade. Um, make sure those are a little smoother into how you're capturing it out. Some of the blends are a little rough, so I would just focus on that uh, part of it as much as anything. And then uh, directionally, I think on her, it feels a little better. But again, we've still got some missing parts like the knee isn't reflecting uh, light that I would expect it to be reflecting um up under here on the side of the the rubber bit that kind of thing like there's just a, a couple points where i feel like we'd want to push that uh a little farther on those reflections um the one thing that didn't quite make sense to me was this orange here right in the center of his torso i'm not sure why this is so brightly highlighted like i don't get this being all orange is it meant to be like an orange gem glowing on him or something I, I didn't get what was going on here, so maybe you can tell me in the comments. That was the part that really kind of stuck out to me. The uh, as like I didn't get this big splotch of orange right here. It feels like this should be directionally lit the same way, where there's kind of like some sides and then deeper shadows, which you which you captured well here on the cloak, where this side is capturing the light very nicely on the edges and is is you know uh, you can't cast a light without creating a shadow. So everything I've said about OSL is very well executed here. Uh, where I like the, the nice deep shadows. I would smooth this shadow out a little bit. Our lines on the shadow are a little bit stark. Um, I understand that like you're trying to capture the fold shadow. That's cool. You can have it be there. I'd still smooth it a little more. You don't want... Even a strong shadow doesn't have quite that hard of a line, right? So just like... I get what you're going for. Just I would, I would soften that edge just a little bit. 
But overall, this is a really cool duel. I dig it. Um, I love that she's saying bring it on to him, and it looks like he's marching right up to her. So uh, very cool stuff. Okay. Uh, next up, Mark. Uh, the cliched first attempt at non-metallic metal. Pretty sure the feedback will be more tonal variation. You got it. Again, listen to your own brain, right? If your brain is telling you something, you are correct. Um, in all respects, right? So, and again, like on the Marine himself, he, we need the darker lines separating everything. What we're really lacking on the Marine is any four and five. This guy is all one, two, three. There's no deep shadows on him whatsoever, right? So we really need to work shadows into this guy to make that stuff pop. Like when you look at this image, this gives it, this gives the game away right here, right? Like it's just, yep. That's all gray, right? Got to slide them out here on the legs, but that's about it, right? And, and it's just like so much of this is just a very flat color. Um, I think the execution on the shoulder here on this stripe looks nice. Drill out your gun barrel. You thought I was going to miss it. I was not. Uh, always drill your gun barrels. And, uh, and, and keep pushing up the contrast on those metals. Uh, we, you know, make sure the edges are nice and sharp, like... Here, this part is well executed on this part of the barrel. I like this light line here and here and under here. But why don't I have a similar light line on the edge of the barrel here? And then on the, you know, if you drill out the edge, why not there, right? So just those kinds of elements, making sure those all have the same light catches and pops. So, but yes, you were correct, Mark. You guessed it. It is, in fact, more tonal variation. Specifically, you need more shadow, more fours and fives. Okay. Uh, Daniel, again, first try at OSL. What do you think you can improve? And then the scenery. So sure. Uh, although we'll do the scenery first because that one's pretty easy. Um, scenery's good. Looks great. Looks like a nice natural forest space. Looks fantastic. Um, I would have a little more browns and stuff on this rock. This rock sitting in the midst of a bunch of mud and green grass would not be this starkly gray. But other than that, looks great. Dig it. Now, as to the green, same thing I've said many times. If you're going to cast a glow, then somewhere there's a shadow. So these, uh, like, the edges of these... Let's flip our... Uh, where's the image? There we go. This one will show it. Okay. The edges of these should be much darker in between the wraps, and the, uh, the, the light edge... So there should be dark lines in between the wraps, and the light edge should be catching some of this green. His hand is pointing towards these wraps. If it's casting a glow, the very edges of these should be capturing and reflecting some very soft, subtle green all the way down to probably like his forearm to like here, right? Um, so that's kind of my my feedback for you there on those two elements. Um, I think the hand execution looks nice. I like how the bright spot's right in the center. I would again still say push some deeper shadows around uh, where his hand is creased. If you know if something's glowing right here, I have no way to, to represent that. But if something's glowing right here, any crease in his hand is going to be really well shadowed. Right, so make sure you drop a little more shade into there. That'll make the bright parts seem brighter. Okay, uh, next up, Timothy uh, wanted some advice on doing some OSL with a brush. Uh, yes, I do have videos on OSL, so I would, for everybody, I do recommend you go back and watch the OSL video that I did. I cover all of this in agonizing detail, so I would very much recommend you go back and watch that. Now, as to OSL on this guy, uh... Honestly, I don't see it. I'm not sure what's glowing. Nothing's glowing right now at the moment is my honest answer to you. Like, if you're going to have some glow, off, it's assumingly coming off the fires, and I really don't see it. Like, it's not... Maybe the image just isn't capturing it. But, like, if, if we're going to do OSL on this guy, then these the top of his head would be capturing orange glow from here. Or this this area of the fur would be well lit from the from the light here. And this area of his skull would be very deeply in shadow because it's at the it's at the convex point of these two lights, right? So this would be very dark in here. And this part of his of his vest would be more brightly lit. And this part on this side would be very deeply shadowed, right? So everything I've said before. Um, I also see opportunities here where we can define the elements more strongly, um, like the gloves and stuff like that. So, you know, standard speech about tonal variation applying there, okay? But yeah, so I would say go back and watch the OSL video, and that'll probably explain more what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, Jeffrey Bryant uh, so says, you know, basically sort of two things he's breaking down here, which is uh, the yellow not having enough tonal variation. You are correct. It does not. And then the, and the steel made him realize that. Yeah, I mean, agree completely. As to the color and composition, like, I don't 
really have a problem with the brown stripes. I'm not sure what's going on with them. I don't know why. Like, they need to be cleaned up. I'm fine with the brown stripes. They just need to be clean and sharp because they don't look like they don't look like clear painted on decorations at this point. Um, so that would be sort of one thought that immediately springs to my mind. Yes, the yellow needs to come down a lot so and, and have a lot more pops to it and, and be more volumetric in how that shading is happening. So, for example, this area of yellow should ostensibly be the brightest, and this should have very bright highlights here and here and have a lot of white worked in, especially on these, like, sharp edges. And then down here between his legs and on the under curvature of this these armor plates, we should have more into a rust color or, if you want a cold shadow, into, like, a an integration of, like, a blue-black, right, for a shadowed uh, yellow, things like that, right? Um, the other thing I noticed is you want, when you're doing the non-metallic on the steel, do make, you want to sort of smooth some of that out. Some of those blends looked a little bit rough, so you want to go for that. Um, and then when you're, uh, the scratches and stuff, again, same thing I said earlier, like make sure your white underline is a little more white yellow and very, very thin. So, I mean, your initial instinct, Jeff was correct. I don't have a problem with the green thing on his shoulder. It's pretty minimal, honestly. Um, and if, if it's the actual symbol for the house, I think that's fine. I think you may want to like scratch that up a little bit so it's kind of there, you know, maybe go with a slightly dimmer green so it's not quite so nuclear. But all in all, it's pretty minimal and there are other bright spots on this guy like the sword and things things like that. All in all, the execution on the non-metallic steel and the sword, those look really good. Um, like I said, we can smooth some of the blending, but that's just refinement and cleanup. That's no big deal. Um, I think that execution is really strong. I think you're right that the yellow is the weakest part. And yeah, it's just... It needs to be brought down some. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Michael, basically working on his Titan here for uh, Adeptus Titanicus. And uh, looking for uh, feedback on uh, the base. So, uh, cool. Yeah, not a problem. I think this is a great base. Uh, I love the tree. I love how it sets the scale, him stepping in the water. It's wonderful. I only have one. Like, this is a really, really wonderful little scene you did for this guy. I dig it. Um, my only feedback for you on this base is one thing, which is the big tree should be painted more. Same with these fallen pieces of, of flock here. So like this, this sort of clump foliage needs more paint and color and variation to it. Uh, just take like a deep dark ink, you know, like a dark green ink, mix it with some black or some brown, start shoving it in the shadow parts of it, and then just dry brush the top of it with a little more like a yellow green or something like that boom jobs are good and you're done you've got it painted and it has a lot more variation but overall this is a really cool dude love the color scheme looks really nice yeah dig it and the, the base looks great okay liam uh basically he's just looking for feedback like where does he go from here okay sure so my answer is going to be the same as what a lot of i've said so far is What's missing here is is a lot of variation on this guy. I know you're going for that kind of like dark salamander's green, so you don't want it to pop up too bright. I'm okay with that. We could still go a little brighter in some elements. I think your fire effects are on point. Those look great. I think some of the green could come up slightly, but where we really have the opportunity is in the other elements. The gold looks really good. I dig that. The black is what's letting you down. This, the, sh the shoulder pad and the backpack are really, really flat. Same with the scales of his salamander cloak, right? Like, this is the chance where we can add a lot of detail into this guy. Um, so getting the edges of the salamander scales nice and highlighted and popped and making sure those are all individual elements. Having the black have some kind of actual travel um, and more defined edges and stuff like that. Because you've gone for a more edge highlighting scheme. Cool. Cool. No problem with that. But if you're going to do that, then we need to do the same thing in the black, right? And we need to make sure that has a nice, nice solid pop to it as well, right? Um, I love the addition of the dust on the feet. I think that's absolutely fantastic. It looks like he's walking in this landscape. I think that's really good. Um, so I think you could bring a little bit of the green up still a little higher around the face um, because that's where we're trying to draw the attention to, away from the eyes. So like here on the top of the head, and maybe here on the tops of the, the armor plate that surrounds his, his headpiece. Um, I think that could could do that. The edge highlights could come a little brighter. Like, if you want to stick to edge highlights, then pop the edges up a little more on the top. Go into a little more strong escorpina green there on the very tops of those edges where those light catches are. Work a little more texture into the leathers. Catch those edges. Give me some, some tonal variation in the black and 
you've got an A plus piece there. So I think, but uh, overall, it looks great. Excellent, excellent work on the eyes and the fire. I think that captures that salamander really, really well. Okay. Uh, next up, Robert. Uh, any feedback would be nice, especially when you realize uh, compared to the color image. So we're going to start on the image. Okay. Here's the image. So we're all going to look at this together for a moment. What color is are, is are, is the skin of these elves? Go ahead and answer. All right. Your answer was probably purple or magenta or something like that. And that is a correct enough statement. However, when we look closer, we see that, in fact, they have warm highlights. It's yellow, white light they're lit in, right? And their shadows are cold. They have blue, black color shadows, right? The day fade is so going into like a deeper purple. So we're going from a bright yellow and through a magenta peachy color into a regular, uh, more traditional purple, and then into a deep purple violet, and then into a blue black, right? Okay, so now let's look at the image. We don't we don't have that here, right? So, so like my my first piece of advice would be if that's the image you're going for, use those colors, right? Now my real feedback. Let's go to the black and white. Is we don't have enough tonal variation on the skin. Again, look at the image. Look at how different this part of her face is in highlight compared to this part of like her, her breast or this part of his chest or this side of his face or this area on her torso or her arm. Like these are massive shifts in lighting, right? Here we just don't have that. Here it's very, very singularly toned, right? So my best advice is when you, when you use a reference image, really look at that image, see it, and pick those elements that you want, use those colors, and travel that journey that that goes on. Right. So, you know, create that same thing where if you want the light coming from a different direction, then this side should be a yellow white light coming into those pinks and purples into a deep shadow here. Maybe some blues and stuff worked into the cheeks along with a deeper purple magenta. Same with the curve of her breast, you know, have that light here on the top of the musculature and deeper shadows underneath, bringing this down into a deeper blue black violet here with just maybe a slight weaker highlight here on top of the leg, that kind of thing. So. That's what I would say. I think he captured the green of the hair quite nicely. I like that. I like the gem on the top of the staff, so I think that all looks fine. But uh, there you go, Robert. That would be my feedback for you. I hope that helps. Okay. Chad says, basically, he's been practicing using glazes for shadows and some and smoothing out dry brushing. Curious how well has he managed those and some feedback on the composition. Sure. So I think you're doing a good job. It is smoothing out. And now we need to work on, again, like more controlling that variation so again when we rely on just the dry brushing and that kind of thing what we get is these these non-volumetric highlights where it's just whatever's closer to the top is brighter and whatever's deeper is shadowed but that's not how light actually works right so like where can we go farther we can take more control of the light right so we can keep working the glazes to like here on this lower part of the leg to have it in more depth here on the lower part here up in here under the arm of the the beast, right? Having this go into a deeper color. So keep working more tones in there, right? We're traveling and we're smoothing out that dry brush, which is good. Now we've got to keep pushing that shadow, right? We've got to keep pushing those highlights. So again, keep pushing that contrast up. Uh, if you go watch the linked video down below, you'll see what I'm talking about when I make a direct comparison between two Skaven. One that looks more like where you're at here, and has some tonal variation. Like, it's good. You've got some contrast. You're not flat, which is great. And then how we travel to take the next step over that. Okay? All right. Next up, uh, Evan on the dread. And his basic question was around the use of the pigment. I feel like it's a bit too much. Uh, how do you manipulate it for the best results? So, I don't know. It, it's heavy. I'm not going to lie. Like, you definitely went heavy. But if it's a real dusty environment, which, by the way, I wouldn't use this, like, green flock if this is going to be the story. Like, make this a mostly Martian base, right? Or something like that, where it's much more red earth. The only reason it feels out of place is because you've got green, grassy earth. Like, how did his feet get this pigmenty, this dusty, given he's walking around in something that's ostensibly largely green, grassy, or a lot of the base is made up of, right? So that's that's the disconnect. Now, how do I manipulate it? I get a very dry old brush and I slap some pigment on and then I take a bigger uh, a bigger soft dry brush, something like this, and I just work it off. And that leaves more of the pigment down in the recesses and really smooths it away. Um, and then once you're happy where it is, then you can, you know, put a drop of alcohol or fixer or whatever you want to do on there. Um 
So yeah, overall, I would say it is heavy. It's not wrong. It's fine if he's in a super dusty environment. That feels about right. Um, he's just not at the moment. So make the basing align to what you've done with the feet, and I think you'll be in a better place. Or wipe away more of the pigment. Go one of the two directions. But that's that's where you're seeing the disconnect. All right, Jonas, uh, been painting for a year and a half, and he's just kind of, you know, this is his first unit, and he's looking for, you know, more feedback. Sure. So, and I love the black and white of this because it's going to tell the whole story. Okay, so the, what I love is the variation on the brown cloaks looks really nice. If you want to pop those up more, add texturing to them. I have lots of video. I have a couple of videos, not a lot, but I have a couple of videos on texturing leather. And then you can you can go just look at real leather, you know, anywhere. Just Google like old saddle leather and you'll see a lot of stuff like that where you can add. It's just slashes, dashes and dots. That's all it is. Just, you know, very thin lines and dots and stuff like that around. No big deal. Now, where we see the issue is not with their cloaks and stuff like that. I think the metals and the cloaks, those look fine. Where we have the issue is with things like the plasma guns. They're very flat. And you can see it in this image. Like plasma should be the brightest thing on here. Right? It should really be popping. It's this bright glowing plasma. And it's just a very flat blue. Right? So if I were going to pick one thing to have you work on for sort of the color scheme of this army, it would be really popping out your accent colors because you're using so many neutrals here, which is cool. I like, I love the orange brown cloaks. I think they look really great. Look like dudes who are like the desert uh, squad for the Adeptus Mechanicus. I think that's fantastic. Um, you just want to make sure that those other elements that are actually introducing a hue have a nice, like, bright pop to them. So look at how you do plasma weapons. Uh, I have a video on that. Darren Latham has a video on that. Go look that up, and that should set you in the right direction there. But overall, looks cool. Good stuff. Okay, uh, Dave Kinnenberg uh, bringing us this uh, this particular... Uh, this has a thing. Howling Griffins, that's there. I said it in the comments. Uh, hope we give feedback on the consistency of the highlighting and shading of the yellow and reds and uh, the non-metallic areas. Sure. So the non-metallic needs to go higher. We don't have our one here. We don't have quite enough bright pops. You have, you have a good run of color. We just need to get up to the highest high and a couple more bright light spots. But that's more successful. It looks nice. Where we really have an opportunity is in the yellow and red. They are very, very flat. See most previous things I've said in this video already about yellow and red space, right? The individual lines need to be well-defined, darker panel lines separating them, uh, and then more shadow. Like, we just, we're way off on the tonal variation here. I need a lot, so go watch that. If you want to do the yellow half of Two-Face here, you can, uh, you can go watch the Imperial Fist video, and then I also have several videos on shading and highlighting red and getting more out of that. But yeah, just, I need much deeper contrast. It shouldn't be at the same level of your non-metallic. I don't want it to be that poppy. But we need something here. It's way too subtle and soft at the moment. And what's really killing it is the panels and not being well separated. Even just adding nice dark lines separating all the panels would change this entire paint scheme. So even if you didn't want to work with a lot of like soft glazes and deeper shadows, I'm okay with that. You could and it would look a lot better. But even if you did want to do that, just dark panel lines will take this up a huge notch. So that would be my biggest piece of next step advice for you. But I uh, hope that helps. Okay, next up, Dave. Feedback mostly on color choice and highlights directing the eye around the model. Sure. Uh, so let's go to this bright piece because he said, is the, this center thing too bright and off color? Yes. Yes, it is. Again, your brain told you it was, and then you went to me and asked the question that you already knew the answer to. Because if your brain, this is the hardest thing to do. It took me so long to learn this. If your brain tells you something is wrong, listen to your brain. It's correct. <laughs> your subconscious mind has like 200,000 times the processing power of your conscious mind. That's it telling you, yes, something is wrong here. And then your conscious mind is like, well, maybe it's okay. Maybe I'm fine. It's not. Don't listen to it. Your conscious mind's a liar. Uh, now. So, like, it's it's in this tabard. This should just be the same sort of mossy green yellow that the rest of this guy is. If this was the, if this was this color, you're golden. So that's number one. Um, because the ghosts are so desaturated, blue white, they're not drawing any attention in any big way, and they're already in a color triangle around the guy's face. So your placement on them is actually well chosen because they create a perfect, nice triangle around the area of the model we want to pay attention to. Compositionally, I also like the way you set him up. The center of the torso and the head are very bright. 
Great. Fantastic. Perfect. Yes. My eye, like if I cover that, that thing and, and look at this, my eye goes exactly where it should. It's great. Moves around perfectly. So, yeah, I mean, I think you're in a really good place. The wood looks old, looks dry, looks like a very evil sort of tree man. It's fantastic. Good texturing, good weathering through all that stuff. Like, like I, yeah, it's nice. Uh, so I think that's really good. You might want to also work a little deeper shadows into around the skull to really make the skull pop. It'll make the brights brighter if under here we have some even deeper shadows. So there you go, Dave. Cool stuff, man. I like that conversion. Okay, Jake English. Uh, feedback on the Kingdom Death model, uh, namely her hair and the copper non-metallic metal. Uh, sure. And then sort of skin if we have some time. So the skin is coming along. I see it's not, you're, you're definitely doing some work. I can see the additions of the reds. Take that even farther, but you're definitely moving the right direction there. So that's looking good. We, what we really need on the skin is a little more five and a lot more one. Right, we don't pop the highlights up enough on the skin. That's the biggest issue. Like, look at my skin. I have a lot of really bright spots where my head is all oily and it's catching this light, and my knuckles really like. Look at how my knuckles reflect the light, right? Stuff like that. That kind of stuff is where you want to really pop those highlights, right? Now, the copper non-metallic doesn't really work for me, and the issue is, in all cases, you go from like one. No two, no three, four, five. We need a, we need more mid tone in there. So go back and watch the uh, copper non metallic metal metal video that I did, and you'll see how you work in those mid tones. We need more like yellow orange light catching in there to make it look like copper. Now, as to the hair, um, yes, I think that's in a good place. Like you can really, it really stands out super stark that you have no mid tones in the in the <laughs> in this image, right? Where it's just like super bright and then pff, way down to the darker colors. One, four, five. All right. Now, as to the hair, I think that's more successful. Let me tell you the, the secret, though, to hair is not just creating that halo of light. That's good. You got, you got that. And we want to smooth out the edge of it a little more. But we also need the dark lines in between it. So you want to take some of this blue, and we want to run these dark lines down here. And then where, where it's blue hair, you want to take some of the deeper purple black and create lines in between that. So you get that full, real spectrum of how the hair is moving, right? So you've got a good halo of light, but now we need to separate those elements with those darker lines. Hopefully that makes sense. So, yeah. Uh, but overall, definitely making progress. Love the skin. Love where you're going with the hair. It's definitely going in the right direction. Just create some more separation there and you'll be in a nice place. Okay. Uh, David is asking uh, how to make things pop a bit more. Uh, and improve how crisp the details are. Yeah, I mean, some of this is just, again, like I've said many times, creating a little more dark line separation between things. Uh, the Again, the basing elements are kind of in the way. Be careful when you put, like, don't put basing junk in front of your miniatures, and if you do have it on the base, paint it. Right, again, this is just like clump foliage that's been stuck on here. It doesn't look, it doesn't look real, because everything else is painted, and this isn't, right? That's So pop is also a matter of having the basing elements pop as well. But so if I was you, I would just trim these trees down. You don't need them. These don't need to be here. Or at least this one doesn't need to be here. You could use this one off the side. That's actually fine composition because it creates a nice line here. But this little branch is, is extraneous. It's just getting in the way of actually viewing your miniature. Now, as far as actual cleanup goes, you know, when I look at stuff like the feathers, more sharp lines. So go look at how I do the detailed feathers. You've got some in here. Pop that out a little more. Go in a second time. Get those kind of elements strong. Strong dark lines as well. Creating the feather lines isn't just bright lines. It's also adding some dark lines where the feather texture is in there. Same with the lines in between the feathers. Like here, we've got this bright spot coming up here. This feather and this one look really nice because we've got these nice deep separations. Here where you don't have those and the, and the yellow has sort of spilled over into here, it doesn't look as good, right? Those kind of clear definitions of light and shadow. Finally, on the skin, that's really your biggest opportunity. So, you know, see everything else I've said in this video. More tonal variation in the skin, more additions of, like, reds, browns. Uh, you can go watch my recent How to Paint Pale Skin video, How to Paint Ruddy Skin video. Lots of choices in there. I've, I've done a lot of videos on skin. I'll keep doing more because there's lots of different variations to skin tone, and you want to make sure you get that real sweep of color in there. Okay? All right. Uh, next up, uh, 
Einrich, uh, first diorama, just looking for general diorama feedback, especially on colors and composition. Sure. So overall, he was trying to go sort of the light to the dark. Um, so I think one of the problems here is we kind of have everything all mixed up. So like it's not well defined enough is the issue. Like we've got a lot of different things mixing together. Let me see if I can get to a shot. This is good enough. We need more clear definition of the various elements. Uh, so like having the, the lava here have the black in it doesn't work. And the dog isn't then the actual main part of the image. Like just relax your eyes and look at the side of it. That's that that's the, the, the chaos side. What do you see? I just see the lava. I barely notice there's a dog there. Right. When I look at the other side, I, I almost can't see the orc. Because there's so much other green and blue, right? So that's the challenge you've got here. We can do the eye test with it. You know, which is better, number one, number two. Um, you want to make sure that when you're doing a diorama, your figures are the focal point. And you have to do that through making sure they have the most contrast and highlights and bright colors. And the attention is drawn to them. So, like, with your nature side here, we've got a lot of other things that are fighting for attention. Lots of these bright turquoise plants and butterflies and things like that. And it's hard to honestly pick the orc out. He almost looks like he's camouflaged in there because of the blue on the side of his face, right? So we need him to be uh, more intense, more bright, and more heavily contrasted. And you can kind of let the rest fall away. You can use deeper shadows toward the edge of the of a diorama. That's sort of a, an eye trick, right? When you get to the edge of a diorama, you can have the contrast weaken. So that because so you can have a contrast of contrast. I know that sounds really funny. We're, we're, we're next level now. Meta contrast. One of the things of uh, a diorama composition is often when you get to the edges of it, it can fuzz. It can become less clear. The contrast can weaken so that all the strength of it is drawing your eye toward the center. Traditional canvas painters will use this trick a lot. The elements they want you to focus on will be quite well defined and in the middle. And as you travel to the exterior parts of the painting, it'll be very weak, right? That's a, that's you'll see a lot, a lot, a lot of like classic paintings from the old masters use that kind of trick. Same thing here with the dog. Like if this if the dog is meant to stand out, the lava should be way weakened down, and the dog should be much brighter and brought up, so he's more part of the focus of the 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 scene right so there you go heinrich hope that helps okay cole bringing us a vermin lord he painted a while back I was trying to focus on strong shadows of small bits of osl to catch the eye yeah so uh overall i think this is really nice i think you did it mostly achieve your goal i like a lot of the strong shadows the flesh blending here is nice i like the deep purple tones and red tones in the flesh the face looks pretty bright it's great. Draws a lot of the attention up there. And here, when you look at the flesh, like this part of the leg and the arm shows it off really nicely. You can see these deep shadows in here coming up to this high highlight here. This is what I'm talking about when I say like variation on the flesh. Now, where I don't see it as much as in some of the armor and the tabard down here, I think we could afford to push the contrast a little more there. Same with the horns. Because they're this annoying shape, like when you look at them, they're very uniformly white. Like this white is the same as this white. So I think bringing the whole tone down in the center of the horns here around his head would help the face even become more of a focal point. The final thing I'll say is the metal is rather flat. We just kind of have traditionally like washed metal. It's kind of boring. So again, like push your contrast. If you're going to go to that kind of great contrast, and I love the very minimal OSL effects, well executed here. If you're going to go to that, you know, work, look at the like true metallic metal highlighted in a non-metallic metal fashion videos I've got. And, and, you know, really, like, this glaive is a major part of interesting, uh, interesting part of his composition. You know, make sure we get to working on him as well. Okay, so, Robin, uh, bringing us this, the bird boy from the Corvus Cabal. Uh, looking for feedback on color composition, where he can focus his, to take his next steps and any other elements. So, the first thing I noticed here on composition is that we're out of balance on the elements. He's very bright, he's very colorful, which is fine. He's kind of zinchy, so I get that. Um, my issue is with the magenta, actually. I don't, the turquoise doesn't bother me at all. You've balanced the turquoise perfectly well. His beak, these two feathers, and these two areas here. Great. It's a wonderful X balance across the mini A+. Plus. Uh, the magenta is the problem. You have this huge shocks of magenta, and then it doesn't have really anywhere else. Like, this little piece in the middle isn't enough. What I would have done with the magenta is taken this first layer of fur and just followed the same pattern you already did, right? Like, like, you have a feather pattern here you established. We go yellow to orange to magenta to blue. 
cool, great. I love this pattern. Let's do it here too, right? It should be yellow to orange to magenta to blue. Like just follow the rule that you already created, right? And repeat these. When you create two signifiers like that and you put them in balance, continue. Just keep doing the same thing, right? Beyond that, uh, my your other feedback would just be, again, same thing I've said many times, more tonal variation, more hashes in the feathers, more breaking them out. The blue looks very flat, so more variation there. You can really see it when we look at this image. Like that blue and the leather and stuff like that is all very, very, very flat, right? It's one color. So, you know, when you take a black and white and everything just looks the same color, that's your sign. So there you go. Hope that helps, buddy. But I love this color scheme. I think it's great. I think the turquoise works. Like, you're a riot of colors here, but you actually kept them all really nicely in balance. I think this, that's your major weak spot. So change that around, and you got a, you got a strong scheme. Okay. Uh, uh, Joni, uh, with his Trader Guard project, uh, you know, just he said not to get to a super high level of fun banging them out. Sure. So a, a couple of general things I noticed from looking at this guy earlier. Um it, the paint job is really rough. It feels like we're relying a lot on like dry brushing and stuff like that. Um, and I noticed like some mold lines in places where there could still be clean up. My basic advice would be to just clean up the, the paint job. I understand you want him to look dirty. So I don't mean that. Like you can have him look dirty, but clean up the elements of the paint job. So like, don't just stop with the dry brushing step, apply some soft glazes to there, you know, stuff like that. Even if it's only one or two, just to smooth it out. Um, and then I think you're in a good place overall. I, I understand you're just basically going for like a quicker tabletop thing. Um, I would be wary on the base. I don't love the basing scheme of just like a bunch of soft mud. Give me a couple more simple elements in there. Even a couple simple elements in the base can really elevate a paint job up a lot. But when it comes to like the horse, don't rely on things like a dry brush last because that just makes him look like he has this really rough texture, like he's made of stone. And I don't think this is a stone horse. Like I get the sense that it's an undead chaos infused sort of demonically powered horse cool give me some some of that texture same with like the wood same with some of these other pieces where it feels like the dry brush was the last step and we're not and it just looks rough so yeah that's my main feedback okay uh ian biggest non-metallic to, to date love to see what needs work sure so uh i think that looking at the non-metallic the steel here works well for me i like it i enjoy that the gold doesn't have enough for uh, like three and four. You have your one of your white lines, and those are relatively well defined. Your two in the yellow and into the uh, sort of three looks okay. Where we have the problem is we I have no four. I would just go straight to like your deepest shadows of black, right? So I'm missing those those soft shades that are the lower three and four that really help set the tones and the directionality of the lighting. It's very like even, and I don't get a sense of the light direction at all from him right so what i need is more of those soft browns creating the actual subtle reflections and the transitions between this deep black you're using of the cold gold and up into it you can use a black brown and stuff like that you can use a cold brown if you want the gold to stay cold like it is here that's fine just i need something like that because right now it's way too stark and it, j it doesn't really feel like non-metallic gold it just feels like yellow like really highlighted yellow you don't have that problem here with the steel because you go, you give me a lot of nice grays, right? Which I like. So there you go. Okay. Uh, Adam, uh, just looking for uh, uh, sort of pointers on how to improve and feathers and animal skin. Sure. So I do have a video on detailed feathers. I would recommend you go watch that. Uh, that's a first place to start. Talks about adding texture. When it comes to this stuff, again, some soft shades and glazes of different colors in there, like some very soft tones of pinks and natural organic colors in there can really help, especially with animal skin tones to make them feel more realistic. But on the whole, I think this looks really nice. Like, I think he did a good job of creating some good contrast and picking out the individual elements. When we look here, the animal has some nice shade and variation to him, so I think that works okay. Um, you know, the feathers look nice. We could create some harder lines and, you know, sort of deeper shadows near the base of it. And that's what I'd recommend. But when I look at the animal skin here, I see some nice bright white. I see some nice deep dark grays. That looks good. Where we've got the opportunity for improvement, honestly, that I notice isn't the fur and the animal. I think that looks nice. I think it's mostly on the metal. The, the, the metal looks rather flat. The gold needs some more soft shades and, and introductions of additional uh tones and variation there i think that's actually your spot for improvement i think the sort of bald eagle like scheme we've done here on the griff charger looks good 
Again, the only place where I notice it's lacking is in the tail. So let's go back to the black and white. Up here, I see lots of nice shadows. Down here, I really don't. Right? So more soft, subtle shadows and then tracing those individual fur elements out and really separating the individual lines of it, I think, would be a good way to go. So I hope that helps, Adam. Uh, Scottster just made it in time, painting a sentinel, uh, which he converted and tried to incorporate a lot of techniques. Uh, just basically looking for feedback on how the scene is perceived and the work on the materials. Uh, yeah, so weathering-wise, I actually really like this. This guy looks rough. Like, he is out in the, you know, in the thick of it. Um, I don't mind the extra, like, I'm not sure about plants growing up on him. That's a little strange. Um, but I like the texturing and the weathering in this case because it looks like you're going for, like, really old, beaten, you know, this guy's got dirt and mud and crust on him. So I think that's good. I like the faded symbols and stuff like that. I think that all works good. The rusty stacks and things like that. I'm just, I'm really not sure on the plants growing on him. That's a little tough for me. If he's, like, active and walking around, it feels like that would mostly be knocked off pretty fast. So maybe a little bit of moss. But, yeah. My biggest problem with this guy is the is this is this like fruit roll up we have that's extending from this missile. This would look so much cooler if we cut this off and just put attach the missile to this fire. Like this would look a looks like ten times better because this just looks like a a piece of laffy taffy or something. Like this is I, I don't know what this is. It looks like blown glass. Um, it does not look like a fire streak coming out of this. If if. If this fire was removed here to here, and then the base of this missile was stuck here, I would be digging the living heck out of this. Because I love this back here. I would mat this out, by the way. Some of this black is a little glossy. But I love the effect you're going for here. With, like, the heat amongst the smoke. Yeah, that that kicks. Uh, that, uh, that, 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 uh, that's good. It's this, like, jelly roll in the middle that's not working for me. Uh, so, yeah, just a thought there. But, yeah, weathering all. See, looks good. He looks like he's out in the wilderness. Looks like he's rough. Like, this guy's on a long campaign. Probably a deep, uh, you know, heavy, extreme weather it's been it's been suffering. And, yeah, I think you capture that well. Okay. Uh, Tim uh, asking, basically, like, he's going for this sort of ectoplasmic, ghostly chaos warrior. And, you know, looking for kind of feedback on what do we think of the the build. And uh, is it too boring? So my, my unfortunate answer for you here is, yes, it is too boring. Like, it looks like a concept army where it's just, you know, it's, like, super fast. Um if you're, I don't mind the little ectoplasmic streams you did out of the the, the hot glue. It actually kind of looks okay. I just kind of dig it actually as a as a scheme. I think that's kind of nice. The dripping goo, I don't mind at all. Do make sure they're smoothed out. Like where it does, where it works is when you have them really nicely integrated into the piece. Where it doesn't work is like here, where I can just see that it's clearly something you stuck on there. Right now, what needs to happen? Say it with me. It's more tonal variation and it's more pop. Right. I, I need more deeper greens in, in something. Like, this could be a recess shadow. Like, here, because he's a ghost, you could have the deeper parts of him just be deeper shadowed and the edges more more upper light. We don't have to follow, you know, follow normal vetro, volumetric highlighting because he's a ghost. He's made of ghost stuff. Um, I would also put dark lines around the red. Make sure that, like, if you're going to do... If you want glowing eyes, I have a video on glowing eyes. Go watch that. The key to a good glowing eye is the dark circle around it. But I would add a lot more like pop of sort of a white lighter color up here around the top of the miniature so our attention is drawn up toward the the center, right? We need more variation across the piece in some way. If it was me, I would shove some deeper shadows into the lower areas of a slightly deeper green and I would pop the top part up a lot more and I would dark line around the, the eyes. So there you go, Tim. Hope that helps. It's a cool concept. I dig it. I, I've never thought of using hot glue like that. That's honestly really cool. Okay, uh, Grzyk, uh, Xandria Azerbolt. Um, uh, any advice on painting the magic cast effect in her hand? And, uh, you know, something like that. So it's just kind of general feedback from there. Sure. So the magic on her hand. My, my best advice is go look at uh, Gareth Nichols and the most recent one he did of her. That will give you everything you need. Like really see how he painted her. See how he caught the light. Like, your center of your palm is good. See how he caught the light on the edge of every ridge of the finger and then deep into the shadow here, right? If you look, really look at his his example of it, 
Um, he has a blog, obviously, and but if you just search like Gareth Nichols for this figure, you'll you'll find it. He did it pretty recently, like in the last month or two, and it looks great. Um, and you'll see, like, really, really, really look. Notice the deep shadows here in between the lines. Notice that he catches the light on the edges, all that kind of stuff. Now, beyond that, I think your your move is going to be to again to just keep pushing the the tonal variation because um, we go to the black and white. A lot of this is still very flat, right? It's good. We're making progress. We definitely have some better control of the light. I think we need to keep making that step. More tones in the skin, more tones in the gold, in the blue, and in the red. So I, there's definitely progress here. I can see it. Um, but I think I would, I would challenge you to keep pushing that contrast up higher. Okay? Okay. Uh, Benjamin, uh, big Mordheim Chapel, which is pretty cool. Uh yeah, that's fine. Sometimes when you upload the pictures, it downgrades. But that's all right. We can still see what we need. So my only feedback on these, is, I really like this. I love the green. I love the earth. I like the the variation, the stone. You've got a lot of different interesting colors. I think we could work some browns in somewhere here and there. And the way I would do that is in streaking. So the only thing I don't notice here when I looked around on a big building like this is I don't really see much in the way of streaks. And that's what I think I find missing from here. There's some on like the metal bits. But I didn't see much in the way of streaks on the stone. And maybe it's just hidden or maybe that did get lost in the photo quality. So if there are some very subtle streaks, I'll, I apologize for that. Um, but my my recommendation is, you know, big vertical structures like this that have all these places to capture water just oftentimes get these really defined streaks, on them, especially when they're in ruin and not being cleaned. Um, so my really strong recommendation, we think about weathering streaking, you could use regular acrylic paint you can use washes to make it you can use streaking grime you can use a hundred different products on the market and i think that's your biggest chance because that'll let you work some like nice brown tones in and really like off of these potted plants and out of here and down from these cracks in the rock and where where water would naturally gather that's the biggest thing i noticed but this is a super cool piece of terrain it's like almost proto sort of notre, notre dame uh so i dig it all right, uh, this is the same one. I think it just got posted twice. Uh, Tebow uh, bringing us this beautiful, beautiful bust. Says he got a silver and, you know, kind of looking at what he could do for gold. So I, I spent a lot of time looking at this one, Tebow, because this is a really great piece. And I think ultimately what I would say is there's a couple things that jumped out at me. So one, the reflection of the magenta, which I love the magenta face mask, locks the eye right there with the bright blue around it. Mm. Molto bene. Uh, my biggest issue is this is a little too harsh on the edges of it. I feel like this needs to be a little softer. It shouldn't be reflecting as strongly and ending as suddenly. Like the reflection on this feels like it would be a little more loose, right? It's just because you're, you're trying to capture the reflection in highly reflective steel of this mask. And uh, I think it would just feel a little more subtle than that. It'd be a little more warped. The other thing I noticed was with the skin, like the skin side of it feels like it could use a little more, especially in the four and five area. Some of the deeper tones don't feel quite there. Like I need to feel a little more like the hand seemed to capture it well, especially at the palm here. But like around this, this muscle structure here and here, it really feels like it's lacking some additional definition that could be added. Um, just some deeper shadows. The only other thing that really jumped out at me was just the edging on the metal. Like, some of the metal doesn't quite have the bright edges that I would expect. Um, like, a lot of this feels like it should be capturing a little more light and should be stronger. And, like, the light catches should be a little more well-refined. Like, the edges here on the arm should be a little stronger. And then, like, a few light catches where there's actually, like, a white, pure white dot of light. Because it feels like what you're showing me here is something that's very almost chrome in its reflectiveness, right? Because it's catching the blue and the magenta and the, the colors around it, which I dig. I love that. I love that you're integrating those colors in. But then if that's the case, then where it's just reflecting pure light, it should have like some real pops, like what's on my forehead right here, right? My forehead is not as shiny as that metal, and yet I've got this like obnoxiously bright light. So yeah, that was my thought. Awesome piece though, man. This looks great. I really love your take on this guy. Okay, next up, Thomas, uh, submission for local painting competition. Uh, moving on to the next project, might come back later. What's the main thing I should focus on when I do that, when he gets back? Yeah, sure. So my answer here is going to be the skin. 
I, I, I looked over these guys. I love the hair. I think the non-metallic could use a little bit more of your mid-tone. It kind of does jump again from, like, bright into very dark. So maybe a couple glazes of, like, a soft yellow or ochre or something like that. But that's minimal stuff. The biggest opportunity we have is on the skin. The skin feels very flat. So, again, more, like, look at the pale skin video I just did. And uh, look at how I work in the subtle pink tones and purple tones and stuff like that. I think that's your biggest opportunity. But I think these guys are awesome. This is a really cool color scheme. Really nice take on the greens and yellows. These guys have pop, pop, pop. I like the weapons. Yeah, I think it's really good. So I think my main feedback for you is just on the skin. It's the only part that kind of lets me down. So there you go. But overall, Thomas, these guys look really cool. What a, what a great warband. So uh, we can only hope that we get an entire uh army of these guys sometime in the next couple years i'm excited i i would love to see a whole army of these like satyrs and centaurs and stuff i think that'd be sweet as all get out okay andrew uh we'll try to see if this will work andrew uh we'll we'll open your your thing in your tab there there we go um so andrew was just kind of posted up and said you know get it in for review again do try to ask for some general feedback my biggest things that jump out at me are what I would recommend is, again, we want to matte this stuff out. Way too much satin and gloss shine to these paints. So make sure you matte it down because you're getting inappropriate reflections where we don't want them. And then I would work on really well defining the individual lines. So you're sort of like paint cleanliness and separating the elements cleanly. Like here where there's a black line under it, I can still see it. Like I want to, I would go back with skin a little more. Here on the jacket, something like having this line more defined with a shadow, more highlights. Again, sort of more tonal variation across the thing is what I re would recommend. Uh, but yeah, there, there you go. That's kind of my my thoughts for you, uh, Andrew. That Those would be my main challenges for you. Matt everything out as you go forward and then keep pushing that contrast up. Okay. Uh, Reinhardt, uh, last minute post and, uh, basically looking for general critiques. It'd be a way to improve this army going forward. So, yeah, I looked over these guys. Um, I think that the, the red on the feet looks really nice. Uh, I don't have any issue with that. It's, some of this is a little caked on heavy. I'd wheel it back on like this guy. The first guy was good. Um, on the yellow, it feels a little green, which I don't think you're going for in some of these where you went over black. So be careful of what you put your yellow over. You want to warm that up first because black is actually made from very dark blue. When you put yellow over it, it turns green. I think the Dreadnought's the best take. Um, I like him. I like the shading on him. I think this guy, where's he at here? Our, our captain here. Um, I think we need to work on, on the, on the forms of the Space Marines. I think you want to work on creating some more soft shadows so it's not like you've got some areas with real deep shadows i'm okay with that i think what we ultimately need is a little more like fours and and deep threes that's what we're missing here um this guy captures it better because you have a nicer transition here on the bigger shapes which i think works well um i like the battle damage i think that looks really cool uh, but i mean overall it looks like you basically got your army so i don't know it looks really good to me um, I think my, if I was going to recommend anything, it would just be the addition of a little bit more soft, like light rust color, that kind of four color into some of the shading of the yellow, but overall, very cool stuff, man. I dig, I dig this army and I love seeing, I love seeing the Imperial fists, uh, you know, uh, the Imperial fists, the last wall of defense, the guardians of sacred Terra. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Sang bringing us some non-metallic with the con, still a work in progress, which I should improve to make it look more metallic. So here's my biggest question for you. What on this is non-metallic? <laughs> that sounds like a weird question, but I honestly don't know what you're capturing in non-metallic. It's not the, like, if this is gold, we definitely are not anywhere near there. If this is a steel, again, we need to go way farther. Now, if you're just asking about the white, the white doesn't really feel non-metallic. But since we've been following this road for a long time, saying this is the best you've done this white. I've been watching these white scars for a while from you. This is it. You nailed it on the white this time. I've been talking about more and more subtle grays and shadows in there. You did it. This is it. This is perfect. Do this. This is fantastic capturing of the subtle shadows in the white scar white. That I love. I love, love, love. And I've been watching you go down this road in this journey. The only thing I'm not sure of is what's the non-metallic. I don't, I don't get it. I don't see what here is supposed to be non-metallic. Like I see the base tones, 
for non-metallic, like the gray and the ochre, but I don't actually see anything that looks non-metallic. So hit me up in the comments saying and tell me what I'm missing here. So, but the white looks great. So if that's what you're talking about, then yes, you nailed it. <laughs> so if what you meant by the non-metallic was just trying to capture the true reflections of the white, then yes, you did it. You got there. Uh, Jim Phillips, any uh, CNC on our boy here would be good. Uh, sure. So let's go to this piece because this is the good picture of him. Um, again, so I think my, my basic feedback for you here is especially with a Nurgle guy like this, stronger definition of elements in between the pieces. So for example, let's look at his rebreather in this part of his armor. Better lines and darker lines separating these individual elements, like here in between the rebreather, around the point, that kind of thing, or this Vox, whatever it is. I don't know what a piece is supposed to be, but, you know, whatever this thing is here, right? Um, I like the shading on the armor. I think that works. We could go a little bit farther on some of the other pieces, like the the arms. You could go a little bit farther for this up toward the light. A little more light, a little more shadow. That could be stretched a little more. I think we could have a little more brown tones in here. You have some straight jump to rust, but I don't really see any of the the pitting and pockmarking of just some additional browns. The rust up here on the scythe looks fine. I don't have an issue with that. I think that actually looks rather organic and good uh, for the, the general volumetric sort of rust of it. I would still make sure when you have these pits, get darker colors into those pits. Stuff like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, here on this one, so I don't know if these are, maybe one is a work in progress and this one's done. I'm not sure. This looks like you got the darker in here. So this is what I was talking about. We could still push this a little farther, get some verdigree and stuff like that in there. You'll have to tell me, Jim. Like, I'm not sure what's the final pick and what's not. When you submit these, try to be targeted and try to make sure I've got the final picks and so I know exactly what to, to look for. I like this. I'd still love to see some more subtle browns in here in places, right? Like around these bolts and cracks, like where rust is kind of leaking out or where the, the enamel has gotten away and we've got some weathered and streaking in there, that kind of stuff. I like the orange. This coming out of here looks good. Give me a little more of the browns. Okay, last piece of the month uh, with Bartos, uh, some pale-skinned Ungor Raiders. Uh, tried using deliberate brush strokes to create interesting texture on the flesh. Does it work? Uh, I think the answer is yes, especially on Ungors. So this is a nice take on them. It's a very sort of painterly take on them, using these deliberately uh, done brush strokes. Honestly, yes, I think it works, uh, especially on something like an Ungor Raider, where it's a tiny dude. you got to paint a ton of these guys. You know, you're know, you going to do 80 of these dudes or whatever. I think this looks good. Um, nice deep shadows, good pinks and purples and dark colors in here. Uh, yeah, I think this is successful, man. I, I Like on the thing you've asked me to evaluate on, I'd say maybe a little more of it in the hands is where we could use some more effort. But other than that, looks great. I think you nailed it. Well done. So that brings us to the end of the month, folks. So there you go. Uh, thank you very much to everybody who submitted a lot of awesome stuff this month. Beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, as I said, reference videos down below. Thank you very much for people who submitted. I look forward to seeing what everybody brings next month. Uh, this is always great. I love doing this. So thank you all for the chance to, to I'm honored uh, and, and feel count myself very lucky to be able to review everybody's work and to offer this feedback. Thank you so much to everybody who submits. It's an act of bravery and an act of, uh, of learning to do so. So I, I have nothing but uh, the highest regard for those folks who submit critique is the best way we grow. Uh, and we are we always need critique to keep growing. So thank you to everyone. Remember the links down below. Do feel free to click that if you want to. Um, I love doing this, but my feedback in the PMP is minimal. This group has grown massive and I love it. Let's keep this a positive hobby focused community. So if you see somebody post and you like it, post, say, hey, I love that. I love this thing you did. If you see something, Offer that positive feedback, especially in the, the world we live in right now and the way things are. We're all doing a lot of uh, you know, hobbying or trying to. We're trying to find our bright spots in what's you know some, some ostensibly very rough times. So do please uh, take that moment out of your day to, to brighten somebody else's, to really uh, offer that thing when something strikes you. It can make a huge difference in someone's day and can help them advance to the next level. If they ask a question, answer it. Always be positive. Always be taking your next step on your hobby journey. So thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate it. And as always, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.